Come on. And actually, just explain to everybody, we have starting. to record these, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I just, I wish there was a pop-up that would tell you, like, start the recording, because, you know, people just miss Chris walking through how to make a million dollars in your first weekend oh, as man. starting a real estate agency, and I'm really sorry that didn't make it onto the YouTube version, so uh, make sure you're live on the Facebook group so that you catch the nitty gritty amazing details. <laughs> so yep. anyways, if you guys are watching live, hashtag live in the comments down below. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay down in the comments below. Unfortunately, uh, for us at least, maybe not for you, but unfortunately for us, Facebook gave us a, a warning, a notice violation, whatever, of our chat bot and what it's doing. And apparently it's wrong. So um, yeah, we weren't able to send out the notification, but we sent out an email instead. So hopefully you're on the email list. If you're not, um, Woohoo, we're gonna get like an extra like yeah. five people. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So, like, anyways, if you guys are watching live, hashtag live in the comments down below. If you're watching replay, hashtag replay. Help us get some engagement going, help this kind of get seen by more people so people can jump in here. Cause unfortunately, I go tag a bunch of people. A lot of people that'll help. Right. Yeah, tag some people because unfortunately a, a lot of people rely on the the messenger bot and it's not gonna work mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah, actually, and the messenger bot always worked really well, right? I mean, yeah, and we we would see it, you'd go from like you know, 20 viewers to 40 viewers, like you double your viewers every time you send out that chat bot. Unfortunately, when you do it four or five times a night, <laughs> it's probably yeah, not true. a good thing. So can we not just do it once? Or like, what's the rule here? Are we not allowed letting people like- I do it. I guess what happens, you know, I know what happens actually. I shouldn't say what happens. I know what happens. You just lose your pot. <laughs> probably gonna have to start a we're getting, we're getting phone bribed. numbers. We're getting bribed. You know what, though, if I can't use the bot, then what do I care? <laughs> so, you know, you're probably gonna have to start uh, collecting phone numbers and uh, doing a, a, a high level SMS. Pass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. genius. Might, That's it. We're gonna do SMS. All right. If you want to be in the real estate marketing conversion mastery group, you got to submit your phone number. We're gonna kick yep. everybody out until you get those submitted. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh man. But anyways, for real, Chris, you're running a, a crazy agency right now. And a lot of it has all of it and most of it, I forget, has come in the last 60 days. I mean, you were like this for a long time and then you're like this and now you're just like, like that. Yeah, you know? I mean, I, honestly, um, I would say my agency always just, I, I don't know, I, I, like my first year in agency was always just like sort of just like steady growth. I never really saw much like a huge like push, right? Um, and then I would say we started seeing that in February, you know, right before COVID hit. And then I was like, man, March is going to be a great month. Right. And I think, you know, I'm sure a lot of people probably thought that. Um, and then of course COVID hit, um, did my best to try and get clients to pause and, and sort of, you know, you know, manage the fires as best as I could. Right. Um, lost a lot, lost a majority of all my clients almost basically during COVID. Uh, but then coming out of COVID starting in May and, and then starting in June, um, the objection of, people not wanting to spend money because of COVID started to really fizzle out, right? People want to really invest in themselves, take advantage of, of everything going on. And things have really blown up, at least in my opinion, over the last 60 days or so. Love it. I love it. And you brought on how many clients in the last 60 days-ish? Uh, 17. 17 clients. Mm -hmm. How much ad spent? Uh, 500 on each, roughly. It depends, right? Like if I have a client that's not getting the best results, I'll no, no, take I'm sorry. ad spend. How much have you spent on ad spend to get those 17 clients? Oh, oh, zero. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, there was one guy that I brought on uh, with paid ads, um, okay. but outside of him, the other 16 did come uh, from cold email. So like- Zero was ads. On ads. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Cool. Hashtag- I guess that, that's what we're gonna talk about tonight, right? Yeah. Yeah, awesome, good stuff. Um, <clears throat> so we got a few people here. Jacob, Jacob said he'll tag a bunch of people if he gets a free t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, there goes the chat bot. Online. Sorry, Jacob. <laughs> we happens. tried it. We're gonna we see don't need happens. you no more. We don't need you. Uh, Kevin's here. What's up? Nice to see you. Uh, Ballas here watching live. Good to see you. Uh, Adrian, Austin, Joel, all here uh, watching live. Again, guys, if you're watching live, hashtag live. Get some engagement going here. Let us know where you're watching from. We'll give you a, a shout out as well. And um, if you got any questions, we're going to talk about um, cold email stuff. We're gonna talk a little bit about, uh, you know, Chris was part of our, uh, not our actually, it was my original beta program, which goes way, way back. 
Um, right, Chris, you were one of the first first that came in. No, I, I wish no, I was actually part of the the new like the, the second oh, round. Where no, that. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I was one of the first couple. I was one of the first few that brought in though. Right. So you were you came into the beta program with Matt then when Matt joined that. Okay, okay. Um, yep. But still, still very cool. You've been around for you know it's been almost two years now oh. that you've been part of the program. So. Uh, yeah. which is awesome. We'll talk a little bit about, I'm really interested to hear kind of your ups and downs and sort of what you're doing to, you know, um, uh, mitigate some of that, right? Because that it's a tough part of being in business and, and a lot of, you know, business, especially small business owners struggle with that, that those constant, like constant roller coaster, right? Of like, you know, you're doing really, really well. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, this sucks. I want to go get a real yep. job. Right. Yeah. So, yep. And I think we all run mm-hmm. into that, you know, even, even to this day, like I, you know, after 25 years of doing this, some days I wake up and it's like, oh my God. I mean, I just sometimes, <laughs> so sometimes I don't know what I signed up for, right? I think they say uh, <laughs> entrepreneurship is, is one of the best, uh, is the best personal development that you never asked for. And I did not expect it to be this hard, you know? Yeah. Um, so and this, is, this is your first business, right? Actually, like, no. So business? no. Okay. No. So I actually, um, when I was in college uh, in my last semester, my buddy was doing Amazon FBA. He sent me like a YouTube video, watched a YouTube video by this guy, uh, Ryan Daniel Moran. He does a lot of FBA. I was like, wow, that looks really good. Started doing FBA. Um, but then eventually just, that didn't work out. Did Shopify uh, as well. That didn't work out. But then also um, I found like a Facebook ads course and then sort of made my way all the way over to uh to, you know, digital marketing, Facebook ads, and they made my way over uh, to doing it for real estate agents. So this is my third one. Cool. What, what I'm curious to know, what made you decide to, to, to get into the real estate, like this crazy business <laughs> Dude, <laughs> instead of sticking a, with, with what you were doing? Yeah, that is a great question. Well, Amazon, I wasn't, Amazon was tougher because just the timelines on that stuff was longer. Profits weren't that good. Obviously, depending on the product you choose, Shopify just didn't really work out for me as well with drop shipping. Um, so then I actually, I actually just came across an interview you did with Jeff Miller. I ended up in him, inside one of his groups. I then saw an interview that you did, Shane, with Jeff Miller. And you talked about doing real estate marketing. I was like, oh, well, that's a pretty good niche. Like if I were to choose one, that's perfect. Right? right? Like there's no... Uh, you know, front desk lady that I have to get past to get, you know, there's no gatekeeper to get to the, the decision maker. Right. So I was like, dude, real estate agents sounds amazing. So I joined literally this group and um, I was like, man, I guess real estate's the what I'm going to stick with. And I just ended up staking. And after so long, you end up learning the niche for a month or two. And it's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm a couple months in. I don't think I can switch, <laughs> you know, and now here I am like a year, it's like, year you and a half later. <laughs> did this, it's like, you don't want to try anything else. It's like, this was hard enough. I don't want to switch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it just, it was just more preference too, like just being able to know that uh, it's an evergreen niche one. And then obviously two, um, uh, two is uh, you can just get in touch with them so easy. Like you can literally just Google any real estate agent, see their number, call them up and, and, and get a hold of them. Super easy. Yeah. Cool stuff. Mm-hmm. So bunch, of, I just want to look into the comments here. Um, awesome guys. Keith is here. Alan Yash, uh, Joel. Um, what's up, Joel? Who else we got? Douglas, uh, Keith, uh, super trooper. He's already like, we just started Keith, calm down. So, but I guess he's going to be here till the end of the show. Uh, John from Atlanta and, uh, uh, let's see Leon here. He's live from Costco. Good to see you. Uh, so Kevin, we got a question right away here off the bat. Kevin, awesome. here's a, uh, one to three, uh, keys or one to three key skills you learn from corporate that you brought to your agency. That's yeah, awesome. that is a great question. So I actually, I used to be an accountant. Um, so I'm like a super organized person, which obviously has its benefits, right. And also has, it's not, not benefits because um, I'm always trying to make sure everything's perfect, <laughs> right? So sometimes that's not a good thing because you end up uh, procrastinating. But I would actually say just being uh, pretty good with money and handling money, especially in this niche, right? Because we have ISA calls, so we have ad spend calls. So just being able to uh, manage the company's finance, but also being able to be really good at managing um, the client's ad spend and ISA calls as well. Um, and I would, I would probably say uh, what I learned just from being an accountant alone, like being good with money is probably what I took away the most. Cool. Awesome. Michael here from Pittsburgh. What's going on, Michael? And we've got Jacob from 
Can you guys tell me what NFLD is? Newfoundland? No, okay, you got it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe you Americans might. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Well, you guys uh, harp on me. Did you see my 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 drinking picture, which was a no. uh, maple syrup? Where where's that? Oh no, that? on on the post, I did, the post you guys did inside the oh maple when, syrup. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. When it, when I first picked it, I thought it was actually beer because like the preview is really really small. But when I saw it, I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> uh, the Canadians coming drinking maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, let's see. We got Kevin here. We got Jacob here. Bow is here. Uh, Adrian, uh, Austin, Joel. Uh, I just read all those. Where you been? <laughs> I, did not, I did not hear you read these. Did you really? I went through the entire list, Matt. You got to pay attention. <laughs> crazy. Crazy. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm, like, distracted. I got people walking up to the door, knocking on the door, trying to see the inside. Like, it's like I told you, we put the house in the market, but we put it as coming soon. And now people, like, are showing up because it's such a hot wow. market. So it's... It's wild. It's wild. Well, uh, this is big news. Actually, a, a couple of, uh, um, uh, I, I think some some big news for you, Matt. Big news for Chris as well. Um, but M Matt's finally moving out of Detroit, which is really cool. <laughs> so <laughs> can't bug him anymore. Uh, Matt oh, bought man. a big old nice house. So congratulations to you. Offer was accepted yesterday. <laughs> nice. Right? Yup. Yeah. That's exciting awesome. times. When are you moving? October? I think. Uh, end of September, early end October. Of, yeah. Wow. So, we'll see. It's nice, nice man. Congrats. Moving up in this world. Should yeah. Be fun. <laughs> see, this, is what, this is what this business can do for you, right? You can go from. Yeah. You know, I actually kind of like your house, man. <laughs> it's I really know, right? nice. It's got some good character. You know, I'm not sure about the neighborhood, but uh, you know, yeah, it's a little sketchy, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But big news for Chris. Chris, can can we can we say uh, you're you're getting in? You got engaged, right? And getting engaged, or you're. Oh yeah! Oh no! I've been yeah, engaged getting married. for. You're getting married though, two right? Years, like two two years, days, yeah. Congratulations! Yeah. yeah. Wait, to be yeah, married? No, yeah, in uh, actually in April. In April. Thank goodness it wasn't this April, right? <laughs> Otherwise, I really would have been screwed. Been um. Fun. So, well, I actually got engaged like two years ago. Um. But thankfully, we did wait on the wedding for just a little bit. Um. So I am getting married in April, which is definitely really cool. Crazy how life comes at you so quick, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, good stuff. Great, great stuff happening in your personal Thank life. You. Um, amazing things going on in your, your professional life as well. And that's uh, what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, sort of your ups and downs in this business, right? Because I think this is kind of one of these things that I think a lot of us can relate to. Uh, you know, we, we mentioned it a little earlier where it's like, you know, being a business owner, small business owner, because that's what we, you know, mo most of us, that's what we do. You know, we're operating these smaller agencies, uh, and then eventually we grow into, you know, we've got some guys that are, you know, growing into, you know, doing seven figures a year, which typically gets into a little bit bigger, but, and it's a tough business yeah. at the same time. Plus, you know, it, it's relatively new. You're working alone. A lot of the times you're working from home. Like there's all of these things that are all very, very difficult. And, uh, so I, I kind of want to, you know, I, first of all, I want to understand sort of, or, or, you know, just get your opinion about you know, how hard this has been and what have you done to sort of mitigate some of that to continue to wake up every single morning and keep pushing forward? Because <laughs> most yeah. <laughs> people would just give up, right? Yeah, I, I guess what motivates me every morning is just the fact that like I got bills to pay and uh, there's no way I'm going back to, to, a, to my accounting job. There's no way I'm going back to that. Um, so I guess that's what motivates me every morning. Um, is just, uh, I guess the amount of like, sort of like pressure, I guess I put on myself as far as like, you know, I used to live in my parents' house, right? Um, about like eight months ago or so. And then I ended up moving out, got, got a really nice apartment. And so I have the pressure of having to pay this apartment, which is great because it also levels you up as a person to, cause you know, you have to sort of meet new obligations as well. Um, uh, but yeah, this industry definitely has definitely a lot of, uh, ups and bad ups and downs. There's definitely a lot of ups and downs that come with it. Um, as far as Chris, do you do more personal? Oh, sorry, I got caught with the uh, with the uh, with the with the comments down there. Um, so, what was the question again? <laughs> I got lost track. That's here. why you have to ignore the comments, yeah, right? You're, <laughs> Until you you're done your your thought, yeah. right? Um, yeah, just kind of like how do you mitigate? Because you you've had those ups and downs in your business, right? So how do you mitigate some of that? And what have you found, especially now? 
being that you, you've in the past six months, or at least sort of since January, you've kind of, you, you went through that sort of transition again, where like the business took a dive, but you've, you know, like things started happening again. You just signed uh, 17 new clients in past, uh, what is it, 60 days, right? So, so yeah, what okay. is it that you're doing sort of now to kind of yep. mitigate that roller coaster? Yeah. So really what it is, is everything comes down to the lead generation and constantly prospecting. Um, so I owe, I definitely owe that to my two VAs, Jovi and uh, Chris, Chris squared, right? We have two Chris's in my company, right? Um, Jovi's actually thankfully watching this. So hi Jovi, thank you for everything. And um, I would say that's what has gotten us over the hump is we've just never stopped prospecting. Yeah. And um, so if you're an agency owner out there that is, is struggling right now, uh, your number one focus should be setting appointments and closing appointments and ultimately just getting better at sales. Um, I heard this recently from someone is, uh, is uh, we're not a marketing company. We are a sales company selling marketing services. And that really changed the perspective to me. I was like, Oh wow, that's, that's a good point. You know um, you know, everything that we do is really focused on sales. So I would say with really he helped me over the hump was practicing more sales every single day, watching, you know, going back, watching the demos, objection handling, and, you know, in a mirror, right. Um, going back, seeing what are the you know, most common objections I'm seeing, and then ultimately just continually doing the prospecting, you know, and uh, never really turning that off. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really important as a business, right? Like, I mean, anybody that's struggling, I, and I, I did an interview recently with somebody that's, that's doing quite well. I mean, that was one of the, like, that's one of their tips, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, yep. if, if your business is, is struggling or you're not making money or whatever it is, sales solves everything at the end of the day. And the day, crazy right? part is, absolutely. And the crazy part is like during the virus, you're hearing, I can't tell you how many realtors I've spoken to that would say, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just take some time off and just sort of see how this, how this turns out. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? I, I don't understand that. But yet there were other realtors that I was talking to that were saying, oh, this is the most busy I have ever been, right? Because yeah. all the other realtors that are taking the time off, they're getting all the leads from, you know, because everyone else is sort of just putting their, you know, just sitting on their hands, just waiting for this thing to blow over, right? Yeah. No, it makes sense, 100%. Mm -hmm. And so you're primarily using cold outreach, is that right? Primarily. I think now we're at a point where we are trying to transition to do more paid ads. Mm -hmm. Um but I just haven't really cracked the code on much yet. But at this point we are, um, all of our, excuse me, all my demos at the moment, all my intros at the moment are really just from cold outreach and just, um, you know, from Instagram, Instagram DMs, Facebook DMs, um, you know, uh, obviously emails as well. And then as people respond to those, we're either responding back and forth with them or ultimately just picking up the damn phone, giving them a call and, uh, trying to qualify them and push them to that demo. Nice. And are you using yep. a salesperson or are you the salesperson? I am the salesperson. That's the next goal is to get a, get someone who is either, you know, an appointment setter that can, you know, handle the positive replies coming in or, and then eventually transition to having someone that, you know, can take the demos as well. So that I could, you know, focus more on different things. So you're now, so then what company are you using to do all your fulfillment? Uh, myself. So we don't do any, <laughs> Yeah. So, so you're doing all do... of your fulfillment and all of your sales and managing all of your staff right now. Yeah. So we have two VAs um, and I handle all the clients. I actually have weekly check-ins with every single one of my clients. And you um, brought in I... 16 clients in the last 60 days? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I have 17 clients, I think right now. 17 or 17, right I'm now. sorry. Yeah. But um, we, uh, I do weekly check-ins with every single one of them which you would think would be super time consuming because now I have a bunch of calendar spots, 15, 15, 15, 15, all over. But when I do onboarding calls with them, I just say, hey, can you work with me here? I batch all my client calls on Thursday, Thursday in the evening, which I do on Thursdays at this time. And I just, from basically three to seven, do, 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 do. And I just go right down the list and I basically just contact most of them. So I have Thursdays in the afternoon and then sort of Wednesdays during lunch, I get all my client calls done. So most people, while they have an account manager that manages all their clients, I don't really need that because one, I do a pretty good job managing expectations and, and issues up front. And two, I talk to my clients weekly anyway. You know, I try to become a friend with them. I set really good expectations up front. So I really never have, you know, issues or fires to ever put out with my clients. Um, 
you know, just because I'm constantly in communication with them. Wow. And obviously I do all the sales, I do the fulfillment, but right now um, I am in the process of teaching my VAs um, the fulfillment as well. So I can eventually just transition from that. I think that's, that's really interesting because a lot of people like immediately start outsourcing, right? They're like, Oh man, I'm going to outsource the sales or I'm going to outsource this, or I'm going to outsource that. Cause I'm not good at this or I don't like this or whatever. Shane's raising mm -hmm. his hand. <laughs> um, He's clapping. So, I'm, I was just looking to see, does that show up on, on Facebook when you do that? Does I don't it? think it is, but uh, no, it didn't. No, so. it doesn't. Okay. Just checking, but it, it does in zoom. Um, mm -hmm. But that means whatever. Anyways, Point being, a lot of people are trying to like skip around. They're hiring this person. They're trying to get this person. I mean, what was, what was your experience? Did you, did you find that like you could get better at the things you weren't good at? Did you find that you were just good at everything or it took less time than you thought? I mean, um, what do you mean? Like, uh, well, like I say, I think a lot of real estate agency owners end up going to white label right away okay. or they yeah. end up going and hiring, you know, a uh, high ticket closer or whatever yeah. right away. They're all trying to like outsource right away. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then we end up maybe not as involved in our business as we should be early on. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, there are some great white label, white labels out there, right. That do some great work. Mm -hmm. Um, I just prefer to have it in house, right? I would just prefer to just do it myself. Um, cause at the end of the day, I think a lot of us know, um, if you know how to do the real estate ads right the first time, um, it's ultimately just not really that time consuming to set up. Um, and then ultimately if you are pretty good optimizing and, and understand that process pretty well, um, once again, that's not super time consuming, at least on my end. Right. You know, so I haven't really, I just, prefer to just sort of keep that in house. If I do make another hire, if I do make my next hire, it would probably be more um, someone who can do appointment setting and sales. That would probably be the next thing. Um, but yeah, white labeling, that was one of those things where um, there are people that do great work, but I would just rather uh, keep that in house. So I thought that was important uh, to be able to really have an understanding of the ads. And this way, when I talk to those clients once a week and I get their opinion on what's going on, well, if they're not getting good results, or I have some clients that call the leads themselves as well, not just, I don't have all clients that just use ISAs. Well, then I can go back and make adjustments to the ads to, you know, just sort of satisfy them. Right. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Shane has a question. He's raised his hand. Yep. <laughs> I think I, they don't, it actually doesn't, Zoom doesn't have a raised hand like it does on the <laughs> webinar does side, it? but no, it's it's just a it's it's a reaction, right? Yeah, it's just a a, cla yeah. a clap and a thumbs up. Oh, yeah. it looked like a. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's works, the right? emoji. I just didn't want to talk yeah, over you. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and I was on a meeting not long ago, and somebody was using, and I was like, "Wow, these are cool features, right?" Because yeah. now I like I just can ask them, like, "Hey, you had a question, mm -hmm. right?" And nobody's yeah. talking over anybody. So instead of me constantly talking over Matt. Um, this is probably a, a better thing. Anyways, <laughs> I want to go back. The reason why yeah. I, I raised my hand was because I wanted to go back to way, way back now because we've asked a number of questions, but back to your cold email stuff. And because yeah. I remember you were like, there's been a lot of discussions, especially on our, our, in our coaching calls that, that we did inside of the academy. Um, and, and people were struggling with cold emails, right? The people were struggling with, uh, j just getting yeah. a hold of people once they've booked an appointment or getting, you know, they get a positive response from a cold email, but then you'd respond to that cold email and then nobody would respond back. So you yeah. can get that conversation going or whatever. Um, I, I don't think you did something that was groundbreaking, but yeah. you're doing, you were doing something, something that nobody else was doing which I thought was, was kind of like, it's the same thing we tell our real estate agents. It's the same thing that everybody should be doing. Yeah. What, what exactly, you remember what I'm talking about, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so why don't you talk a little bit about that and what exactly you do and, and how that works out for you? So yeah, absolutely. So first off, when we cold email, we ask leads, uh, or I mean, we ask, we put in the email, you know, respond back, yes. Uh, with your best phone number, if you can take on more appointments or if you're interested, right? So leads. So first off, the initial email that goes out, like, hey, you know, can we do if if we could do ten plus, you know, booked appointments a month for you? Would you be interested in learning more, right? Something like that. 
respond back yes with your best number if you'd be interested in, in learning more or you know if, if you could take on more appointments all right so we send those emails out leads respond or real estate agents will respond back one day to say yes they don't read that we're asking them for their phone number so they'll respond back to saying yes um or two they'll just respond back yes in their number or they'll respond back how much what's the cost more info right they'll respond back with all these different things right um, so what I've done is I built out a bunch of canned responses that once they respond back with this, we send them back a, a canned message with the calendar link at the bottom of it. And then what my VA does is um, we then, uh, so if they, res if they responded back with their number, perfect. We have a Google form. They go ahead and enter in, you know, their name, um, you know, the email that they responded back with, the, uh, the, the phone number, uh, not the phone number. We have them then go up in Google. So let's say Joe Smith, the realtor responded. Um, they then search up Joe Smith realtor. Um, and then based on the location of where he may be like, we'll type in like Joe Smith Orlando, cause maybe we're targeting Orlando. So we, so we get the exact Joe Smith we're looking for. They find Joe Smith, you know, the realtor in Orlando, right? Their numbers are usually on any website or on, on realtor.com or on Zillow. You can usually find the number. They grab the number, they put it into the positive reply form. They submit that it goes into my go high level account. And then I just give them a call. Right. And I think that's the mistake a lot of people make is because I did this. Like when I first started cold emailing, when I was getting responses, um, instead of just calling them, what I would do is I would just like, I still put them in my CRM so I could follow up with them, but I would just keep emailing them. Hey, I'm sure if you saw my last message. Hey, you didn't book a time. Hey, you got some time tomorrow. Now I just give them a call and no one gives me any crap for it. You think they would, but no one really ever gives me any crap for it. Um, cause I'm, I'm not cold calling them. I'm warm calling them. You just respond to my email. You know, I have a reason for why I'm calling you. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Different. So what, what, let me, ask, what, what do you say on that call? So you, and again, let's just go over that process again, yeah, because okay. this is very similar to like what I tell my agents when we're booking appointments, right? So, Hey, mm -hmm. we got a booked appointment, call your lead right away. Yep. Don't wait five days or four days or three days to, to jump on the call, call them right away and confirm the appointment or ask them a quick, like a, just a random question just to confirm something, right? Exactly. Whatever it is, start that conversation immediately because they're engaged at that point, right? Plus, so, so yeah. right? And, and so just mm -hmm. again, what for you, what, is that, what does that process look like? So people can really get a, get a good understanding yeah. of this. Early, I remember earlier on, all the process was is you got a response, you picked up the phone. I remember that because that's what we used yeah. to talk about, right? Yep. But yeah. now you've kind of systemized it a little bit so that you can now capture more leads from the ones that are responding positively. Um, and, and you're actually doing a little bit more research now. Yeah, absolutely. So like, um, first off, I do my best to call them that same day. Um, it, there are times where I'll call them like, I have times where I'll call them like two days later and, and you know, Hey, do you remember that email I sent you a couple days ago? And totally fine. We're good. But I always do a best call same day. Cause if they responded to you, there's a good chance they probably responded to a couple other emails cause they got a lot of them in their inbox. Right. So uh, email comes in, um, positive reply comes in. I go into my high level. I have a smart list literally set for all my positive replies that have not been called yet. Once they've been called, I put a tag, or, you know, once they've been called, I move them to a different stage. Or once they've been called at least once, I move them to, a, to the power dialer. So this way, all my people who are on the second call are in the power dialer. All people who haven't been called are neatly organized inside a, a specific, specific smart list. So that's just for the organization purpose. Now, as far as getting those people on the phone, I give them a call. I think it's, it really comes down to the tonality. I remember I learned this um, from Jordan Belfort, right? The, the, wolf of, the wolf of Wall Street, right? And what, hit, what I remember, I took some training from him. I remember he said... Um, when you when you're in your opening line, you want to say your name in a question. So it makes them sort of stop and, and think for a second, like, do I know this person? So every single person I call up, I go, you know, once they answer, they go, hello. And I go, Hey, is this Matt? And I make it sound like, I, you know, I know them. Like, hey, is this Matt? And they go, yeah, who's this? I'm like, Hey, this is Chris Lombardi. You uh, respond to an email, uh, my coworker. And then I say the email account that it might've came from, cause we'll buy aged email accounts. So it could have like, Caitlin Jagger, one, two, three, Gmail. So, hey, you uh, responded to an email my corker Caitlin Jagger sent you yesterday about the qualified booked appointments. How's it going? And then they always respond to that. How's it going? Oh, it's going good. And then before they can like get a second to like try and ask me a question, go, hey, uh, got a, I was just wondering, like you got a couple quick minutes here just to see if there's a good fit. And they, boom, yes. And then we go right into the qualification and I'm like, awesome. So what are you doing right now? So I was like marketing and lead generation goes every single time. 
Um, well, not every single time, right? Because sometimes they might say no. And then if they do, I'm like, awesome. You know, worse. Can you, any shot, you know, I can send you a calendar invite and we can book a time for tomorrow. And then I just set up an intro call for the next day. Uh, and then we'll just do it then, right? So that's generally how it goes out. It's all in the opening line. Yep. Very cool. Nice. You can, there's a raise hand off. <laughs> Were you waiting for me, Matt? <laughs> Lots of questions. I'm reading all the questions that are coming in. This is great. Um, awesome. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and thanks for sharing all that because I, I think what you're doing. Yeah, what's wrong? <laughs> People can't see it, but it's like I just keep hitting the, the questions. Oh, I didn't even see it. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you raising your hand? Oh, man. No, I just, I'm like, I'm blown away because there's like questions about, you know, email and this and this and this. But like what you just said is so much gold. It's so much gold, right? Mm -hmm. And people ask sometimes before these episodes, like when we get in that waiting room and we're all just kind of chit-chatting and whatnot, catching up, you know, people be like, well, how much do you want me to share? You know, what do you want me to say? And like 99% of the time, like whatever you want, whatever you want, do, you know, whatever you want. Because the reality is we will talk about things that if somebody were to take them and just freaking implement them at a low level, they would see massive success, yeah. you know? But like what mm -hmm. you just said right there, like how to get into a qualification with somebody who's, who's just responded to an email, you know? Yep. Like that's so big. And, and if people would do that, they'd have way more clients. How many of your clients, and I, you know what? I take that back. Let, I won't say that for sure until you answer me this. How many of your 17 clients responded back and booked the appointment via email versus you calling and being. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good question. I am not sure. I keep stats on, on everything. It's as far numbers as how many, guy. Yeah, no, no, I have <laughs> stats on everything as far as like how many cold demos have we booked? How many demos came from paid ads? How many qualifying calls we did? Yeah. How many, how many intro calls? So like I, I, I categorize, categorize those two different things. Intro okay. calls, completed cold intro calls, completed paid. And then qualifying, com qualifying calls completed as in, or were they qualified or unqualified? So I have all the stats on that. But as far as who actually makes it to the demo, the only stat I have is were they a cold, were they, did they come from cold or paid? Well, um, thankfully, we don't have to call yeah. all your salespeople on this. So if you had to guess, <laughs> if you had to guess, how many would you say were from you reaching out versus them actually booking it on your calendar or whatnot? Yeah, that's a... I would say, oh man, I would probably say like 13 of them, but a majority of them, a majority of them easily. Yeah. Not everyone books an intro. Like you'd be surprised. I think, um, you know, if I go back into our stats, um, like last month we had uh, 104 positive replies, like 104 people responded positively back to the emails out of those. Um, only 22 booked an intro call, right? How many so, of them actually have a conversation with? How many did I have an actual conversation with out of those 22? Oh, no, um, no, no. Had, not, not the 22, the, the other ones. How many did you have a conversation with out of the hundred? Yeah. Um, so we ended up completing only just 20, surprisingly, we only had 27 qualifying calls out of those 104. Um, but so what happens a lot of those times, you know, we call them a few times or I shouldn't say a few times. I call each lead probably I would say five to seven times before um, I sort of just put them into a different area of my high level. Cause then, at that point, it's just like, all right, we're getting so many of these. There's no point. Just keep calling the same person over and over. Right. Um, so surprisingly, we only had 27. But when I look back at the other months, um, like in May, April, March, um, and even February, we had 50, 49, 46, and 48 qualifying calls in those months. Um, and as far as like unqualified to qualified, um, it's uh, roughly about 60, 40, 60 unqualified, 40 qualified. Just to dive, just to dive into numbers real quick. I know it's a little off topic. Makes sense. So about like 100, 120 responses, 40% of that, is that sort of the, like 40% of that you're getting on a call with them. And then about 50% of those you're booking into an appointment. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. So, so just looking at the stats right now, I was like just literally just looking back at, July out of the 104 positive replies we had, we booked 29 to a demo. So um, our demo- That's not our, bad, that's 30% from cold yeah. email. <laughs> our demo, yeah, yeah. Our demo booking rates, 
generally pretty good. Yeah. Like, I think that's in, in my opinion. But, yeah, but that's that would be pretty good, right? The, I personally think so, yeah. But that's because the trick is you can't – when you're cold emailing someone and you have them on the phone, you know, it, it's essentially a cold call. They didn't set up a time. A lot of the times you're catching them when they're driving, they're on the go or whatever. So it's super important – that you keep that call quick. Cause if you don't keep that call quick, tables turn pretty quick. Right. So I do my best to find out what are they doing as far as lead generation goes? How many deals are they doing a month now? Where are they trying to go to? As long as I have a good idea of where they're at, then I'm going to transition to that demo because even though it's not, I didn't qualify them totally. When I take them to the demo right before I actually start the demo, I then ask them more questions right there. And then throughout the demo, I have certain slides I stop on to ask them more questions. So as long as I feel like, all right, they're a decent prospect, prospect on my qualifying call, I'm like, all right, let's book them to a demo because they didn't book a time with me. So it's super important that we get off this call. You know, we get, we get in and get out and book a demo quick because we got to call the next positive reply anyway. You know? so, you're not, that's how experts- so you're not doing the demos when you get them live. You're only qualifying, getting out. I do sometimes. Sometimes if, if they are free and – you know, I do have the time on my calendar where it's like, hey, I could do a demo right now. I'll ask them, hey, you know, by chance, like, you got 20, 30 minutes right now. We could just do a quick demo right now. They say yes. Also, I tell them my Zoom link, and then they, they hop in there. We do a demo right there. But otherwise, you know what I'll do? I'll just, I rather, sometimes I like booking the call because then what happens is once we book that demo, they're now getting about 15 emails over the next 14 days. They're now in my, you know, they're now in our book, the time drip. And they're getting emails from testimonials and different stories. So sometimes I'd rather book that call at least a couple days out so they get peppered with a couple emails really quick and just sort of warms them up, right? So let's talk Uh, about that. So that's really interesting because I think that's that's an important part of your process. Yep. Um, So you've gone now from, from the cold email, positive response, to you getting on a call, and now you've booked an appointment, right? So from that, they hop in to another drip campaign and you're what does that look like at that point and so they're going to get a bunch of emails here before you get on a call with them what does that look like if you don't mind sharing and we want the exact we want the exact emails and everything right like templates (laughs) (laughs) well they're all unique right because it's it's different client stories so as if you've been in the industry a while right you have just use yours (laughs) it don't matter to us people steal their shit all the time (laughs) I'll give you guys a snapshot. <laughs> but like, that's funny. Yeah. But like, literally it's just like, you know, I, I'll, I'll break down different client stories. Like um, I'll, we, we, we have this one guy, he's a solo agent. He did 11 agency agreements in one month with us. I was like, are you kidding me? Out of on 150 leads. So I was like, wow, I'm still begging this guy for a testimony. I'm like, dude, you have to give me testimonies. I know I'll close a couple of deals off that alone. But with that being said, I just took, you know, the subject of that, basically the subject of that email is Will got 11 agency agreements in 30 days, right? And just every subject of the email is just a, re- a result that we did, right? And then in the email, I might have some screenshots of, of the live transfers or appointments we did, or maybe I'll have a screenshot of a text message conversation, or I'll have a link to the testimonial and I'll take them right to either my website or like, you know, Vimeo or wherever the testimonial is being hosted on. Um, right. And then the first email- keeping them, enga- keeping them engaged, keeping them excited leading up to yeah. the appointment. Absolutely. And, uh, yep. and, and, what, what, and I'm kind of curious to know, because another big challenge for a lot of people are no shows, right? Especially for this kind of stuff, because it's, it's cold, right? Like you went, it's a cold yeah. email to, you know, basically a cold call to yep. book an appointment. What are your, what, what, what are you seeing your no show rates at? Our, uh, our demo show rate is 70, like exact 71.67%. That's crazy. Which I feel like it's pretty good. Um, personally, I, maybe it's because not the brag here, but I feel like I do a good enough job on the intro call. Cause I, I do, I, I personally feel like I do a pretty good job selling the demo because I tell people, look, you know, generally as far as what we do here, as far as next steps to transition to the demos, look, usually we book a time for a quick 20, 30 minute demo call. It's really like 45 minutes to an hour, but I don't want to tell them that. Right. So, cause it can go that long. It could be 20 minutes if I go real quick, but if I tell them that, then, then there'll be less likely to show up. So I say, look, it's a quick 20, 30 minute demo call. And uh, what's going to do is two things. One, I'm going to show you the system. Right? I can give you an actual visual representation of like what it actually looks like, right? That's super important. I can actually show you the lead quality. But two, I'm going to pull up some client accounts for you. I'm actually going to show you the results that we've done for others. And you can actually see the quality of the live transfers we're doing. Because as you know, Joe, right? Like 
I can't prove that to you over a phone call, right? So, so with that being said, Joe, you got some time maybe tomorrow at like 10 a.m. Boom. And, and they can't argue I don't want to book an appointment they, now. <laughs> yeah, because they, they can't argue that, right? I've made every single point, like, I'm going to ramble if, if we're like, I'll tell them like, I'd be doing you a disservice if, if I to, if I started rambling on the phone here for 20 minutes, let's just book a demo for the exact same amount of time. And uh, this way I can actually show you client results. And they can't argue that, right? Cause I'm going to pull up client results. I can't prove that over a phone call and no one ever gives me crap about that. That's awesome. <laughs> it's like, guys, yeah. if you're watching, this is amazing. This is so, so cool mm -hmm. because if an yep. accountant can do it, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yep. Right. Oh man. There's well, so many times I've called up like the you know, accountants and I'm like, the, the, like, I'd like after two or three, I just want to get off the phone. <laughs> like I'm done. I yep, just yep. don't want to listen to the numbers. I don't want to listen to nothing. Right. Chris, you've done such an amazing job, but like people right. need to understand people really, really need to understand that this is not you starting yesterday. You've put in a lot of effort into what you've done here over the past two years. You've, you've studied what's in the academy. You've gone out, researched your own stuff. You've done numerous calls. You've been practicing a lot. You've been tweaking your system quite a bit. So this is not just something you started yesterday, right? No, I mean, I've done up to, you know, maybe it's not a high enough number, but I've done, I have done up to about 500 of those qualifying calls, you know, whether they've been unqualified or qualified up to this point in the last roughly about a year. Or so I've done up to 500 of them. So I feel like I have a pretty good idea of, um, you know, of, uh, of having those conversations with, with clients. Or Makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. in the beginning, I feel like there was a, like, it seemed like you struggled a little bit, right? Cause everybody always talks about the success, right? But tell us a little bit about when you were getting started. Like, cause you got started how long ago? Two, two years. <sighs> well, I first started in the digital space. I bought like my first like Facebook ads course in like October, I, I want to say. And then I came across your guys' course in January. Okay. Um, and then I want to say, I, I can tell you the exact date. We stock everybody. <laughs> yeah. I want to say it was like January 10th, maybe right around there. And I think I got my first client or was it a trial client like shortly after. Um, and then like right after that, right when that happened, that's where I like, I quit, I quit my job. I was like, let's just do this, you know, cause I've already been experimenting with entrepreneurship for like two years during that process. So it was like, all right, let's just make the jump and just make sure it happens. Um, so during that process, once I made that jump, uh, I mean, it was a journey, like just sort of getting off the ground and ultimately cause at the end of the day, you know, dealing with cold email, primarily doing those, it's, it is cold, you know, it, it's practically cold calling. So, you know, I was definitely nervous making those calls, you know, and, and getting over that hump. Even today, sometimes just getting in the zone. Like today I had to make, we had a, a great day on positive replies. Yes, we had 13 Monday, we had 13 Tuesday. We had a great day with positive replies. So I was all backed up. So today I had to call like 30 new people between today and the last couple of days. And even then I was like, damn, man, like, it's tough getting over that hump and having to get in the zone to, to call those new leads. I mean, even today, I still, I still, uh, it's still tough, but, um, uh, it took a lot of practice, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, we, I, I love it. I love the success. I love, I love the hustle, everything that you've done. Um, and, and I just, you know, you've always been so committed to mm -hmm. the beta program, to the Academy, to the REMCM group. I think you've probably, you're probably one of the ones that, I, I think attended the majority of the, the coaching calls yeah. that we had inside the Academy. You know, you were always there and, um, uh, and now you get to, to reap the rewards. Right. And it sounds like things are starting to, to get easier for you. Uh, your business is growing. You signed up, you know, 17 new customers in, in 30 or 60 days. Uh, and, and it's, uh, it's just really cool to see. Right. Um, and, and it sounds yeah. like you got a good system yeah. and, and that, which is going to yeah, well, you know, allow you go ahead. Sorry. Well, yeah, well, what I mean to say is, you know, what, one of the big things for me when, when, when I went into that, that transition from, from March to sort of May is I was like, look, like I need to also improve my product, right? That's also super important. I do not want to be running this same system that, you know, I mean, how many other marketers, you know, are similar to me and how many others do the exact same thing. I was like, I need to also improve my product. So one thing I was doing to start bringing on more clients is I was starting to negotiate more with them and, and do whatever I can to just try and get them on board up the guarantees, right. Just to get them on board. Cause I knew if we can start getting a massive influx of clients that also allow me to test more ads, test my system, get better system, find out where the bottlenecks are, improve there and also improve our own company as well, as far as backend systems. So, um, if I, if there was one tip for sort of like a newer, a newer agency owner is, you know, be a little bit more flexible on pricing and try and bring on as many clients as possible. 
um, in a quick period of time because that will really allow you to prove your product as far as like the ads go, where you can deliver and of course improve your own back end as well. And you'll be able to see the bottlenecks a lot quicker. And can you tell us a little bit about what's happening on these demo calls? You know, cause it yeah. sounds like you're having a really, really high conversion rate from your booked appointments to sign clients. Maybe you should sign up. <laughs> yeah, <there's the> fun. <laughs> Just go to Chris's page and sign up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be happy to take you through, man. If you see Shane <laughs> Hillier signed up, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So the the basically what the uh, what the uh, the demo is is ultimately what I start off. You know, first slide is uh, is uh, basically just like an introduction to you know uh, the system, basically. But really, what I do is I stop on that so before we begin, and I and I ultimately recap what happened on the intro call. You know, obviously I take your notes on the intro call, say, hey, you know, Joe, you, you know, just to recap from intro call, you told me that, you know, right now you're, you're doing Zillow, you're doing Realtor.com, you, you've tried Facebook ads in the past, you've tried bold leads, you know, yada, 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 it didn't really work out for you. At the moment, you're doing about two transactions a month and you're looking to double that or, you know, go to five. Is that, is that correct? And they say yes, right? And then maybe we might stop there and have a little bit of a conversation, they get a little bit more and say, awesome, today's the demo, you know, first off, what we're going to do is before I show you the actual system here, uh, what I'm going to show you first, I'm going to show you a quick, quick case study of one of our clients, right? Because as you know, hey, the nuts and bolts of the system, that's great and all, but at the end of the day, what really matters is that it actually works. I got to show you that first. So first, what we're going to do, Joe, is I'm going to show you a quick case study of one of our clients. So we're going to get into the actual system. So then I jump in, we go into the demo, and then the first like 12 or so slides or so are basically a case study of probably one of our best performing clients, um, is a solo agent gets great results, tons of live transfers. She does a great job converting them. Um, so I just basically go through story about her um, and really take them through basically like uh, Russell Bronson's uh, perfect webinar. It's basically like where she was in the past to where she is now. So we talk about like, you know, she's tried, um, you know, Zillow, homes.com, obviously she tried cold school and none of those things really worked for her. But fast forward to now, and now this is what we're doing for her. Right. And then I have screenshots of all the live transfers and all the different screenshots that I walk through each single one of them to show, Hey, like, look at the quality of these. And then once we go through her, uh, once we go through her case study, then I have like a couple other slides of other case studies of other people just to really show them like, Hey, this thing works. Uh, and then I go in and we introduce them to the actual system. And I have, you know, different slides that break down, like the, you know, the, the quality of the leads that we're going to bring in. Um, the live transfers, you know, how, how the calls are going to go down, how we're going to qualify them. I go into the CRM, um, you know, how we have a, a text concierge that will handle the text messages for them. Um, so that's basically how we do it. Um, and then obviously at the end, then, then, I ask, then I ask for their money. <laughs> and how's that usually go? You get a lot of yeses, you get a lot of noes, you get a lot of objections you got to handle. What are you seeing right now? Yeah, that's a great question. So I'll tell you what really helped um, my closing rates. And, you know, I would say a while back, I used to try and pressure them to sign up on that call right now. They're like, hey, it's, you know, it's 2,500, but only if you sign up today, right? The sign would be like, you know, um, you know, normally it's $3,000 a month, but if you sign up today, it'll be, um, you know, 2497 and we'll waive the setup. Right? I used to do that a lot, but you know what I found out? Um, maybe I can do that now in the work, but I, I felt like I was just turning off a lot of people. There was always, you know, there was always something that the, there always seemed to be something they had to talk to the wife, they had to do this, this, that, and the next, obviously those are all smoke screens and I get that, but then it made me look like a little bit of a frog. Cause it's like, I'm telling you to sign up now and now I'm letting you go and we're scheduling a follow-up call. So once I sort of got rid of that and I was much more open with leads and scheduling follow-up calls with them and, and, um, being a lot more lax on the call, that's when the deal started flowing. I still get tons. Yeah. You know, I still get, I would say half of my leads probably or 40% still close on the call, but we still schedule a good amount of follow-up calls and they'll, they'll just close then anyway. Um, so I, that's generally how it goes. So we still, I, I try and deal with their objections up front. You know, throughout the demo, we have certain slides that I do stop on. So think of it like, um, like a bunch of doors and you're trying to shut all the doors. Um, I can't remember this, uh, the, uh, this analogy, but basically just a bunch of trap doors and each single door is an objection and you're trying to close every single door before you get to the end of the hallway. Um, and that's really how I view basically every single demo is, you know, when I go into that call, you know, if they told me on the intro call that they've been burned before, then I know I really need to show them that these leads are very high quality because um, I know that could, that could easily be an objection, whether they're, maybe they're not saying it on this call, but it's definitely something in the back of their mind yeah. or it's definitely something that can come up at the end of the call, right? 
So I either got to, you know, show, show tons of client results. I'll pull up backend systems, right? I'll pull up our reporting and show them all the different, you know, leads that came through just to really flesh that objection out. Or at the end of the call, I'll just give them a couple of our clients numbers and say, Hey, give them a call up. And then, you know, if they move forward, then I'll happily, you know, I'll just pay that client out for spending the time to talk with that person for a few minutes. So that's very, cool. I would say that's been the real big thing is, you know, once you have a good amount of clients and you build up a good client base and you're getting them good results and your product's doing really good, well, then you start asking, hey, would you be open to talking to clients for me um, in exchange and I'll happily pay you, you know, $200 or $150 one time, right? So, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I'll get people who ask for referrals instead of just, you know, just sort of shoot them down. You know, I already have people lined up on the back end that have already agreed to be called, you know, so I'll gladly give you their number. Um, to have that conversation with them. Cause I know they're going to say positive things. And if they do, that person's usually, you know, 60, 70% of the time getting up moving forward. So um, that wow. was super key as well is, is really having like that power partner realtor that, that, um, that uh, speaks really highly of us. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, we talk about that a lot in the program, right? And yep. I guess another question is what are you typically charging? Cause you said you brought on 17 clients the last 60 days, I guess, I mean, you're not, we're not talking about $97 a month per client, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? So I, ha I do have non-ISA clients as well. I do have some clients that, that don't use, uh, that don't use the ISA because, you know, they might be a newer agent or maybe they just right. think about it was just too high, but that's fine though, because I set them up in high level. I, you know, we have the text automations that go out. They do a great job calling. I, I do a pretty good job. I feel like setting expectations. So I don't really, those are usually my easiest clients. Cause I know they're, they're usually just doing fine surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, but my ISA clients, so we charge anywhere from roughly about 2,200 up to 2,500. It just depends on the market, right? If you're in Cleveland, for example, um, we have a client over there in Cleveland, their median sale price out there is hundred and not in Cleveland, but in the County of, uh, where Cleveland is in uh, Cuyahoga, it's 160 K, right? So I'm not going to charge them 2,500. I do drop it a little bit. And then in some cases for a client like that, just cause I know in a 160 K median sale price market, leads over there are going to be like a dollar or something. So I could go all the way down to 1800 if I really, really want to. Right. Um, but you know, depending on the market, right. Like we have a client in Sacramento, right. So that'd be, a, that'd be someone who I would charge 2,500 because their lead costs is, is going to be, you know, in the four or $5 range. Right. So I need to make sure I have a good enough cushion um, to also satisfy the ISA costs and the potential inflated uh, ad spend as well. So anywhere between 2,200 to 2,500 to, to, to end this ramble here, but I do negotiate and I will go down if it means bringing a new client on board to one, get more results for potential opportunities for testimonials for potential uh, referrals on the back end. Right. So I will, I will negotiate with clients as well if needed. Okay. And I find that really interesting about you because you've kind of been like this the entire time you've been part of the Academy, right. Which was like, you're not charging these astronomical fees. Like you always hear this, like charge what you're worth, right? <laughs> it's like, no, nah, let's charge based on the potential <laughs> opportunity. Right. And it's, you know, I, yeah. I, I still, like, I still tell people like I've got clients on free trials still. <laughs> really? You know, like, yeah. It, and it, that, that, I mean, that's just the reality, but like the opportunities that they bring are so massive. Like I feel bad charging them, you know, it's yeah. so, so, and you've been, you've ever since you and I, and, and uh, like you, that you've been into the Academy and the conversations we've had with you, um, you've always been like that where you've been kind of flexible with your pricing yeah. based on the type of client you were bringing on based on where you were inside of your business understanding that you can leverage a client to get more business as well, yeah. right? We talk a lot about this too, like referrals, leveraging clients, getting your your champions, right? We, we call them champions, but your, your, your power realtors. Um, and that's really important to continue to grow and to continue to scale it, like all these little things, right? That and like, for instance, like if I get a client in one area and we're doing really good, for instance, I have a client in Raleigh that we do really good with. Well, then if we're getting really good results and rally with her, then I'm going to start cold emailing and rally. And if I can get those people on a demo, I'm going to you know, I'll tell them on the intro, look, I'm not even blowing smoke here. Like I know you're in rally and we have a agent also in rally that does really good results. And by the way, these are exclusive by the way. And then, you know, I bring them to the demo and I'll show them the live transfer we done. I'll just block out the numbers and the emails. That's, that's <laughs> and awesome. The names, and I'll that's do that huge, and I'll say, right? look, 
because you're, just, you're, 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 they're going to relate to that. You're actually yeah. showing them an agent inside yeah. of rally or inside of their local area, as opposed to showing yeah. an agent results from across the country. Like they're going to respond yeah. to that. And not only that, like that fear of miss, it's like, all oh, this other agents getting all, my, all these leads in my area. Yeah. Right. Like that fear of missing out is, is real. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. Great strategy. So <laughs> that happened. That happened literally just today. Um, so one of our case study clients in our demo is coincidentally in Raleigh. So I had a, I had a demo with the guy in Raleigh. I'm like, this is gonna be an easy one because you know our whole demo is based around Raleigh and all the results we're bringing in Raleigh, like everything in there is, is perfect and gonna line up exactly what he's looking for. We get to the end and he wanted to speak to our Raleigh agent. Um, and in my head, I'm like. Oh, I hope she doesn't hate me for this because, because, um, but of course I called her up. She was cool with it. And, you know, I know once he speaks to her, um, cause they're exclusive. So I was like, Hey, you know, I let her know these are exclusive leads. Like if, and if he signs up, nothing's going to change. Everything's going to be all right. But obviously, you know, that demo was super smooth. And we have an even, even another rally agent who, who could potentially sign up as well. Um, because she went through the demo and she saw the results we're bringing and, you know, it's just much easier to sell. So I'll gladly negotiate with clients knowing that, um, you know, we can end up bringing more on the back end in that market as well. And I'll leverage those results. Like for instance, we just brought on an agent in Dallas. Um, we just brought an agent in Dallas, uh, today, just today, actually. And I was negotiating with another agent in Dallas who just didn't, who was just, he wanted, he wanted all these discounts and he just, I wasn't, wasn't really budging with him, but we brought another agent in Dallas. First, his eyes just went live today at 9.43. We had three live transfers come in for him. All off the bat, I was like, oh, this is great. Took screenshots of all those live transfers, blacked out the names, sent them text messages to him and just showed him, hey, like, you know, this is what we're doing for another agent rally. You know, I'd love to do, I mean, in Dallas, I'd love to do the same for you and, uh, you know, just sort of see what happens there. Um, so um, that's definitely the power of just sort of, you know, because these are, these are exclusive anyway. So it's not like we're screwing over the agent in that market you know, cause there's enough to go around for everyone. It's awesome, man. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely, might actually absolutely. use that. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. We got a ton of questions here. We got some OGs awesome. on the call here. We got uh, Luke that uh, Luke Ch Shankula who chimed in a little earlier. He was probably looking for his free gifts here. Nice to see you, Luke. Um, you'll have to come a little later in the show to get those. Uh, but a um, bunch of people, guys, if you have some questions here, there's been so much that's been shared. Let me go through some of these. Let me just find. Um, uh, okay, yeah. So Jacob was asking, Chris, uh, do you do more personal outreach or take sales calls yourself? Um, I don't do any of the outreach. Uh, I have two VAs that do that. Um, so two, one, both of the VAs do cold emailing. Both of them do. And then I have one of them that does Facebook. I have another one that does Instagram. <laughs> so um, so this way they both have sort of a hand in the pot. So on the, on the cold email, strategies have I've kind of changed with the cold email stuff, right? Um, whereas before you'd use something like Woodpecker and just send out a ton of email. Now we're looking yeah. more at like taking a VA and actually have a VA yeah. just sit there all day long, send emails. That was right? the problem. So things were great. So back in May of, of last year, um, you know, all of our emails were going great with Woodpecker. Um, and I believe it was like July 15th or June 15th, Google came out with this thing where um, a lot of these sending softwares, uh, they were going to start shutting down. I think Woodpecker was approved, but regardless, anyway, like a week later, I started having issues. I bumped up the sending amounts and all my Woodpecker accounts started getting shut down. Um, and then like a month later, a couple weeks later, I ended up, um, I ended up just getting a VA that could just send me emails anyway, because I figured, you know, one, they could send me emails and two, I could leverage them to start doing some other things as well. And also I was like, you know, this way I could put my back against the wall and, and ultimately um, that would motivate me a little bit more as well. So that was another reason why I got the VA. <laughs> well, yeah. And it sounds like, and, and so your VA is doing more than actually just sending out the leads. Like they're, they're sorry, emailing the leads, right? They're, they're sending out the email. They're waiting for the response. So they get a response. Then they do the research, update the database. Then you get the information, start making your calls. Right. So the VA yeah. is not just sitting there doing emails all day long. They're doing a few extra things there monitoring the emails. I'm assuming they're responding to some of the emails as well. Things like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they, all the emails um, will just forward to one account, uh, one, one address inside Yahoo. So we have a bunch of Gmail accounts that we send from, but we have everything forward to a Yahoo address. Um, I can't, I, I DM some dude one day, um, some cold email expert. He told me to do that. So I was like, oh, that's a pretty good idea. So because we used to do <laughs> it on try Gmail. It, right? so, yeah, so I was like, oh, that's a pretty good, good idea. So this way, if things get shut down, at least the forwarding address is over there. Right. And um, it just keeps things maybe just a little less linked. And I was like, you know what? 
Um, cause I, as a former accountant, I was always about risk mitigation. Right. So I was like, you know, that, that, that's one thing that can take, you know, reduce a little bit of the risk. So had the forwarding access. Right. And, and the VAs um, are emailing each an individual, each individual lead independently, right? Like it's a manual email. Yeah, that's, they are doing. So a common method that's taught is the, uh, is the 10 BCC method. Right, so you, you put no one, or you put the forwarding address in the two, or you put no one in the two. You then put ten people in the BCC section, um, and then you know put your email and, and, and the subject and hit send. We used to do that too, um, and I just found that you know emails are getting blocked a lot quicker. Um, so instead, we actually stopped doing that, and now my VA send one manual email per person. So you know one email to Matt, one email to Shane, one email to John. It does take a little bit longer but the response rate is much better. And we've never had an email account ever shut down. You know, I, I've, I always see people in groups saying, oh, my email accounts got shut down. Um, I'm having tons of issues. Emails are getting blocked. We never have any issues, except a couple of times where it was my fault because we started testing some new things. But when I don't meddle in, meddle in the process out of all the hundred or so email accounts we send from, because um, we do rotate them so they never get shut down, we don't ever get emails ever shut down. How many emails per account are you sending? before you rotate um like what's what sort of so, rotation so each va sends roughly about 500 emails per day uh, but keep in mind they're sending one manual email per account so that that is pretty time consuming um but it is worth it because we're not having that hassle of, of email accounts shut down so what they'll do is um the, uh, I, don't know I gotta that, ask, man, many... where do you find a human being that could sit there every single day and send out 500 emails? Oh my God, I can't, I can't sit like... still for Whiskey Thursday. I can't imagine sending out 500 emails. Yeah, That's it's funny. My, VA, thinking my about VA was it. actually watching this too, and she she just hopped off earlier, so she, maybe she could have answered that for us. But um, yeah, I don't know how. I don't know how she's got to cheat it, a little bit. She, yeah, gotta, she, she might be man. She's got to she, she she first... throw in a couple BCCs in there. <laughs> <laughs> my first VA did that. My first VA uh, was cheating the emails, and I did catch her. And that's how I came across my current VA I have now, um, who's who's at an absolute saint, right? So maybe she does, maybe she doesn't, but she does great work. So so I'm definitely happy with what she does, You're right? But that is, I don't know how the hell she does it because I remember when I was first starting, I sent the emails manually myself. Um, you know, just after sending 150 emails, I was feeling like pain throughout my, throughout my whole, throughout my whole arm here. So uh, she must have like a whole cast on or something. They're <laughs> all day sending those. <laughs> yeah, I feel crazy. bad laughing. I just can't imagine. I, yeah. I just, I can't, I can't imagine anybody doing that. But I mean, that like, that's what we used to do, right? I mean, years ago, yeah. like this, I mean, it was just repetitive tasks all day long. I guess some people love it, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Know, <laughs> it's like, it's just the way it is. Um, but, to answer, answer that question you had about how many emails we use, how do we rotate them? Um, generally, what we do is I think each VA has roughly about 50 to 60 accounts each. So they don't lot. So, so, so VA one has 68, let's just say, let's just say she has 60 accounts herself. VA two has a separate 60 accounts. They do not log into the same account because um, we don't want any issues with that. Um, each of them have their own forwarding addresses, addresses that they check. So VA one, all his, all her 60 emails, they all forward to, you know, one forwarding address in Yahoo VA2 has the same exact setup. So they both check different addresses. So we're not, you know, logging into the same email. So we mitigate that risk as no accounts getting shut down. Um, then what they basically do is let's just say VA1, she takes 20 of the, the first 20 of the first 60 emails. And those are the emails that she'll use on day, um, on day, uh, uh, let's just say on Monday, right? So out of those 20, she'll use those on Monday. And then the other, the next 20, she'll use those on Tuesday. And the next 20, she'll use those on Wednesday. So the emails that we use on Monday, while we do send from those on Monday, she doesn't use those again until Thursday, right? So they sit there and they, they cool down for about three days or so, right? So then now, so that's the process as far as just making, you know, mitigating risk and never having accounts getting shut down. Because when they do, it's just a, an absolute headache, it's a huge time suck. But now, 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 now it's Monday, she's now sending. What she'll do is we call it round one and round two. So she'll send basically about 10 emails per account um, in the morning, right? So 10 times the 20 accounts, it's, that's 200 emails in the morning roughly, or you know, she'll send 12 million per account. So that's, 200, that's 10 emails per account in the morning. And then she'll then do other tasks. And the, after that, like maybe onboarding tasks for a new 
client or, or you know, doing Facebook or Instagram stuff. Then she takes her break and then she comes back in the afternoon for what we call round two sending and she'll do the second round of emails. So then she'll send another 10 emails per account. So by the end of the day, she sent roughly 400 to 500 emails per uh, total out of those 20 accounts, 20 emails per account, but it was spread out really throughout the entire day. And then we're not touching those accounts for another three or four days or so. Right. So that is the secret to never getting an account shut down. Um, and then obviously we, we warm them up pretty, pretty softly. We'll send like one email on the first day per account, three emails on the second day, uh, Chris, we're five gonna, we're emails gonna, on the third. We're, we're yeah, going to we're gonna have to get you to come teach cold email strategies inside of the academy here very soon. Yeah, man. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, let, let's whip through some of these questions here. Yeah, um, yeah. So, Jose, what's included in the demo? Oh, we already went through that. So what Jose was yeah. asking, what's included in the demo or how does it work? So you already went through sort of your, your, your demo and slide deck. So we, we don't have to answer that again. Um, Which, where are you at in the question? I'm trying to find it. I, I are you don't working know. from the newest back or are you going to the oldest forward? Newest back. I'm going from the oldest forward. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, oldest forward. So I'm at um, like after all the introductions. So uh, now I'm at a geo right now. So where do you find your VAs? Um, that's a great question. So can I give a plug here or <laughs> is, that, is that allowed? Or? Well, oh yeah. So I, <laughs> so my first, so my first VA, I, I, I got cutting us a check, Robbie. you know, like we're really money hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my first VA I did get from Robbie. Um, this was like a year ago. Um, and then unfortunately that first VA while well, she was good, um, Things that end up working out with her, but they did end up replacing her for me. That's where I got my current one I have now. Um, and then that VA, um, her best friend was unemployed or had just gotten released. Um, he was uh, he was uh, Robbie's partner's like top VA, and he had he was unemployed, so we brought him in. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. He's my current VA's best friend, and also he's been like the main guy for them for a while. So um, that's. Yeah. If you need That's a VA, awesome. I mean, you usually just find someone and ask them, do you know any other VA? <laughs> you know, does your yeah, VA yeah. know any VAs? And, and they all, there's always someone over there looking for work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think we're going to actually, uh, you know, we're going to have Ravi come on Whiskey Thursday. Uh, nice. we, we've been, we, we just started chatting with him again. He's been really busy and stuff like that, doing his videos. And I don't know if you're mm -hmm. getting, <laughs> I, I'm getting slammed with all of his retargeting videos on YouTube. Yep. I think I, yeah, I watched one and now it's like, I get every single one. I get all of them. I do. I do too. <laughs> so, uh, but I, we just talked to him uh, not too long ago. We're going to schedule something for him to come back on to Whiskey awesome. Thursday. Maybe sh share some of those strategies, where to get VAs, things like that. Um, and he's a good, good guy too. And his scaling with, uh, systems is, a, is definitely a good program. So. I mean, he was one of the reasons why I stuck in real estate as well. Because I remember I, like when he was first starting, he, I mean, when I first met him, he was at like that 18K, 20K a month mark. I remember messaging him on IG and he said, look, man, if you're going to do it, just stick with real estate for 30 days and stick with it for 30 days before you switch it. So he was actually the reason why I stuck with real estate for those first 30 days and then just start pivoting, looking at all these different niches. And that's how I ended up, ended up here and, you know, ultimately just sticking with that one niche. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Giovanni says, uh, man, I wish those coaching calls were transcribed. I'm thinking of just listening to them straight for a whole weekend. Yeah, a few months. Yeah. <laughs> there's, I think that there's, there's nine months of coaching calls, right? In wow. of the academy, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. it's, there's a yeah, lot the of them. Yeah, six-week coaching program went a little long. Yeah, it, it was supposed to be a three-month <laughs> yeah, introduction right? in, in the beta program. We decided to do for a lot longer. Um, but yeah, my money's worth. There, there's, a, there's a rumor going around that the academy is actually looking to start up a new coaching program. So um, yeah, hey. that's what ends up happening. Um, so Giovanni, again, uh, could you elaborate on your emailing setup? Are you using Gmail or services like Mailgun or SendGrid or are you, or, or your own SNTP server? Every, everything is just Gmail. It forwards to a Yahoo forwarding address. And they're all being sent manually from a VA. Awesome. Simple. Uh, Love it. Yep. Yep. Jacob says, uh, calling them after the initial yes was a game changer for me. Email back in uh, emails back and forth sucked for him. So. <laughs> yeah. And not even just the yes, like we have leads who respond back. How much, what's the cost, more info. I'll still just give them a call too. They might ask, I, you know, I'll still ask the same thing. You got a couple quick minutes for, uh, to see if there's a good fit. They might ask me, you know, how much is it? And I'll just, 
you know, I'll just say, hey, look, you know, we have different packages, you know, based on different budgets. It sort of just depends on what exactly you're looking for, you know. So with that being said, like, you know, what are you doing right now as far as marketing and lead generation goes? And then we just go right into the intro call. So um, I see that a common thing with like cold email is people will, will a lot of times say like, every time I get on the phone, people want to know calls. If people ask it for me too, but I just beat around the bush, you know, you know, I deflect it once or twice. And then after that, they just keep asking Then you know, usually they either can't afford it or, you know, I'll, I'll give them the cost. And if we still in the book in a demo, awesome. If not, then, then whatever, maybe I saved, you know, an hour. Of my time. You, you haven't, you haven't tried my response yet. Right. Uh, what's yours? You know? <laughs> just, if you have to ask, I'm probably too expensive. Oh, <laughs> I felt like that was a little aggressive. I might've used that a couple of times. <laughs> That's a, that's always always but, it, but it's true, right? If they're asking about the price, they typically can't afford it, right? Yeah. But, you know, yeah it's, not, it's, it's not, I mean, it's the truth. Um, the, probably, just to give you an idea, the, probably the biggest objection I get nowadays on the intro calls is people want to, people on the qualified calls, people want to pay a close. That I don't really have a good, a good answer for because that. Sorry, say that again. I didn't catch that. People want, want to pay what? a close. They want, they want to pay on the back end when a deal closes. I get mm. that a lot. I, I've been getting that at least a couple times a day. That one's a frustrating one. We don't add those to the positive reply form because they they will respond back to the, our original email saying that. So our VAs don't add that back, add that into the form. But, you know, while I'm qualifying them, sometimes they'll say, you know, I'm really just looking for a system that pays at close. I'm like, yeah, yeah, ain't nothing I can do for you. Yeah. Um, Are you seeing that, really more with that now one. than before? Or do you think it's just was, because you're doing more calls now or just more emails that you're seeing? It just seems like you're getting more of that stuff. I would say, that's a good question. I would say roughly the same as it was maybe last year. Maybe, maybe I, I probably a little bit more than it was last year. I think it's becoming more and more popular. Um, unfortunately, I just don't have a good objection handler for that. Um, Cause usually if they're looking to pay a close, the math. usually not, not do well, the math. Well, <laughs> that's that, I that's do the say objection. That. If you do the math, it doesn't make more. sense. They're paying too much. I'll write that down actually. <laughs> yeah. Do the math. Cause, and I tell people that too. I'm like, look, you end up paying, you know, two, three K at close, or if you pay the same with us, you end up signing, you know, three to five agency agreements per month. You know, it's, it, it just doesn't make sense, but they want to mitigate that risk. And they say, I'm happy to pay that at close. I'm like, yeah, all right, well, you know, generally when they ask that it usually means I, I generally see is usually because they're only just charge 75% at close, make a whole yeah. lot of money. Right. Well, the thing I mean, is, if you're, um, you're going to take the risk, you might as well charge an arm and leg for it. Yeah. Well, my brother is actually taking his uh, real estate license. Uh, I think this week on Friday, I think tomorrow, actually. So that's been something I'm thinking of is can I add him to my LLC and eventually charge, you know, charge a close depending if the agent would qualify. Right. But um, I've heard that's a risky road to go. It's down. a risky road, but if you have, you like, if, if you have the systems in place, you know, and it sounds like you've got, you know, high level in place, like there's just certain things you need to do in order to do that, where it's like, you need to be able to control the leads. Right. That's yeah. a big, big thing. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I wonder um, if you, if somebody said that, if you just said, yeah, actually that's exactly what I do. So how it works is you're going to cover the marketing cost and then you're actually going to pay me at closing 40%. Mm. That's another thing I did think of. Like if we could do something like that, then they would just cover my hard costs and then pay it close. So I, I have thought of that as well. Um, as but you have to spend at least $2,500 in ad spend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, man. I like that. Yeah, I'm sure there's a way to get around that, that one, right? Um, so, uh, P uh, Peter here, uh, love it when they reply and have no information to contact them. So, have to reply on email back and forth, right? Okay, we talked about that. Well, then um, just Google. Alan, what's your email warm up process like? Because I found that my emails keep getting disabled. So we talked a little bit yep. about your setup, which seems to be helping with um, getting your accounts shut down. Yeah, I mean, literally, you know, one that setup, but two, the, the warm process is pretty simple. I mean, you know, we thought we, uh, we, um, we send like one email per account basically um, on day one. Uh, day two, we'll send like maybe three in the morning on that account, another three at night on that account, right? Round one, round two, then day three, five and five, day four, um, you know, we'll do maybe 10 and 10 and 10. And then the weekend comes with so the account rested for a couple of days, right? 
Um, and then what I might do, just take it a little bit of a step further, is I'll tell my VA, hey, you know, send me a test message back to my, you know, personal email account, and let's have a quick conversation back and forth. So if it does go to that account, I can see if it go in spam. If so, report is not spam. You know, get it out of there. And uh, so that's generally the process. Awesome. Uh, really quickly here, uh, we had Jose ask, where do you scrape your leads for the cold emailing? Yeah, to be honest, uh, D7. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a damn shame, but we do get them from D7. I tried something where, you know, we were scraping them from, from LinkedIn, um, like some tool, but I felt like it was a little risky. So we just went back to just scraping them on D7. Cool. You're scraping them on C8 yep. again? Uh, D7. D7 leads back. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Let's see. Shane, are we at? Uh, Alan. Alan. Okay, perfect. So Joel said. All Next right, one. Please. What's that? Next one after Alan. Yep. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> subscribe to the email list restaurant. Okay. Oh, Jacob was saying that you can subscribe to our restaurant newsletters and things like that to help. Um, yep. You know, what? we, we did that too, uh, in the beginning and I just found it to be like really time consuming, yeah. um, to warm up accounts. Cause we had to, you know, each single kind of have to subscribe to like, we would subscribe to like the Washington post or, the daily skinny or whatever the heck, you know, the ones that said daily. And it was, it just became so time consuming for account. Um, and I didn't really think it made much of a difference in my opinion, really. Um, maybe it does. Maybe I could be wrong. Uh, Geo says, how do you keep your emails from getting blocked? Um, you know, sometimes we'll send an email and, and it might return that it got blocked, you know, and then we'll, maybe we'll use like a different template for a little bit. So we'll, maybe we'll switch between two templates. Um, but usually the reason why you get blocked sometimes is just because you're, maybe you're sending too fast. You might've sent like too many emails on that one account, right? Does that be a reason? Or one, um, it's probably usually pretty important to clean your list, right? So even though we do scrape from D7, um, and there are, you know, a lot of crap emails on there too, we do, we do scrub them through never bounce as well. Um, so, you know, we get rid of a lot of the emails that would have, you know, thus bounced. Um, so that, you know, that generally helps as well. i you know, I think I'm sure there are emails that bounce, um, but my VAs generally just don't tell me. They know to just, you know, switch up the template or switch up the account for a little bit and let it rest. Makes sense. Yep. Um, Giovanni says, would you mind sharing your cold email conversion numbers? How many emails are you sending to land an intro call? Yeah, that's actually a good question. So like, um, let's see. So, so that's sort of tough because how, I guess it would probably be better. So if I count my qualifying calls completed and intro calls, uh, completed. So if we look back at, um, what's a good month here that I can give a good example of. So like in May, actually, oh, so we can use February. February was actually a really good example as far as positive replies go. So February we went, we sent 7,400 emails. Um, we had 50 qualifying calls completed and just 10 intros completed. So, um, you know, I guess do the math on that 70, 7,400, you know, 70, what is that? So 50, 60 over 7,400 times 100. So that's 0.81% of the emails that are sent turned into a completed uh, qualifying call. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. So just shy of 1%. What's that? Just shy of 1% yep. of the email sent turn into the qualifying call on my end. Maybe it could be a little higher if I was a little more aggressive in my calling. Like one thing I'll do when I, when I call leads inside high level, I don't just call from one number. Like we have like, I have like four different numbers. I have, you know, my, my current area code where I'm at now, I have a New York number. I have a Texas number. I have a California number. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking of getting a Florida number. So let's just say they're in Texas. Well, I'm going to call you for my, my, my regular number now, but after a couple call attempts, I'm going to switch up to my Texas number. <laughs> right. Or if you're in Atlanta, um, I'll switch up to my Texas number because that's sort of like closest to that state. Right. So um, I do switch back and forth between the numbers. So, you know, you could definitely probably get that up to at least one, 1.25% if you're a little bit more aggressive with the calls. Makes sense. Switching up the numbers. Yeah. Geo says, how much do you spend on paid ads for your agency? Yeah, that's a great question. So this month we, we plan, um, I would say for September, I'm planning on spending around two to three K uh, for September. Um, but to be honest, like this month, we really just like turned them on like the other day. I think we're only spent, I think, I think we've only spent like maybe 200 this month. So, um, really not much just because, 
Um, I've turned them on. I've turned them off. We had a lot of positive replies coming the last couple of days, so it just wasn't really as needed. But September, I do plan on spending, you know, roughly around two to three k. Makes sense. And Alan says, "Did you say you also have in-house ISAs, or they are out to outsource?" Yeah. So as far as ISAs go, um, I do use uh, LeadSpring. I use Austin's team. Okay. Um, but one bottleneck I did know, because this is the benefit when you get when you do have more clients coming on board is you get to sort of find out what's the bottleneck that each one's coming across. So you can obviously improve your service. So the number one bottleneck that I was seeing is clients were having a tough time responding to the text messages inside to go high level. Right. We had some dudes who, you know, tons of unread messages in there and they were just leaving deals on the table. Right. Cause not every single lead answers the phone. Right. right. So what I did was we, I only had one VA as of a month ago, but I ended up hiring a second VA to come on board um, to one, amp up the emails, but two, um, to act as sort of a text concierge. Um, okay. so what I did is I went just back through all, you know, my client high level accounts. I, you know, basically created a, a dialogue flow of every single message that goes out in the account. I'll go through all the different conversations my clients were having to see how leads were responding to those messages and then how my clients were responding to those messages. And I just built out a, a dialogue flow. So, if, you know, they say this, you say this, they say this, and we've been booking appointments pretty consistently with it surprisingly. Um, so we've also built out an in-house text concierge, which is really just one VA who pops to each account once every couple hours and, and does a pretty good job. And eventually we plan on hiring one guy who just does just that because this guy does um, the prospecting too. Makes sense. Joel said, how many emails are you sending out? I think we already covered that was 500 a day. Um, so 500 per VA um, yep. is generally what they can handle if you're sending one per VA. So um, right now we're sending roughly about 800 to 1,000. Okay. Are you rotating through, like, I'm, I'm assuming if you're doing a thousand a day, that's 30,000 a month by six months, you've done <laughs> you're the accountant. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep in mind, obviously they only work five days. Obviously they only work. You know, right. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. right. But, so it's 20,000 um, a month after yeah, six well, months, you've done. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, cheers, yeah, guys. Hey, 120,000. 120,000. 120,000. Yeah, no. So to answer your question, um, if I think I heard, heard it right, do we go back up to the top of the email list and start going back down? No, we don't do that because I have done that a couple of times when we ran out of emails. And one thing that I did see happen a lot of the times was um, uh, we started getting a lot of bounces were going to happen because obviously agents change brokerages a lot. So a lot of the emails that they had six months ago, three, four months ago is no longer valid. And, you know, I'd rather not cheap out on just a hundred dollars to clean a list. Um, you know, I'd, I'd rather spend a hundred dollars to clean the list versus having to deal with the bounces and risk getting accounts shut down. And then my VA spending time building up all these different accounts. And now we're going a week or so with that positive replies. So I just found it better instead of starting back up the list you scraped to just re-scrape an area, uh, instead because the, the risk of changing brokerages and such. Interesting. Okay. Yep. Um, let's see. Does your email get blocked when you send links? Uh, we don't send links. So <laughs> I, I, maybe, maybe, um, I think some people, uh, do do that and maybe they have success with it. Um, but we don't actually, I shouldn't say that we, we don't send links in the initial message, but in the positive reply message, like if they say yes or how much or cost or more info, we do send back a canned response, which includes, um, a calendar link. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's see. Yash says, how much are you charging for client? I think you said 18 to 2,200 on average. Uh, anywhere. For, so really, you know, I always shoot for 22 to 2,500, but right, like right. If, if they're in an, if they're in an area where like, you know, median sale price is like you know, 150 K or under 200 K roughly. Yep. I know for a fact, I'm going to get leads at such a low cost there. So I know I'll still be able to probably profit, you know, by at least 700, maybe possibly in that market. So um, I'll, I'll negotiate down if it means I can bring on a new client and ultimately leverage those results and maybe a testimonial or a referral. Makes sense. Yep. Alexander says, what's your cost per live transfer? Cost per live transfer. That's a great, that's a great question. That's, um, that's the honest. next number you've got to figure out. <laughs> that's the next number I got to figure out. I don't know. To be honest, all my client accounts have like 10% live transfer rates. Um, we do a pretty good job generating at least a, a good enough lead. So um, that's a great question and shame on me for not knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time we'll get to yep. it. Uh, Joel says, do you come across, I have a few calls booked with other companies and I want to see what my options are before making the decision very often. Yeah. I mean, I just had some dude who, who just had that. Um, 
you know, I, I really don't pressure people on, on the demo as much as I like I used to in the beginning. And that's what I really feel like just didn't work for me. I tried the hard closing to, right. to sign up right there for the discount. Um, so if they want to shop around, that's cool. You know, I'm pretty confident in the product and that we do a pretty good job. So, um, you know, if they want to shop around, that's cool. But I do try and make sure that I am the last demo that they do, right? Because yeah. I want to be the last person on their mind. But then you also run the risk. What if they get hard closed in the other demos? <laughs> the other no, demos they get on. It's so, a common argument. Do you want to go first or do you want to go last? Yeah, um, I'd probably rather go last, but you do still run the risk of them, you know, being hard closed by another agency owner. Um, yeah. So that could definitely happen. Um, but I definitely have gotten that sometimes. I mean, I guess, you know, uh, I guess it's sort of valid, right? I mean, you do have the right to sort of shop around and sort of see what else is out there. But, um, you know, I, I've gotten that a few times. What, what, what's kind of cool though, but about what like, you know, what you're doing, what you're developing and as you're growing and stuff like that. And because the fact that you're an accountant is at the end yeah. of the day, you're, you're tracking everything, you know what the numbers are. So at some point in time, you're going to know that if I do this, this many times, I'm going to get this. And then that's going to translate into a close are going to get this many closes. Right? Exactly. Well, that's why we brought on a second VA that's to, to send emails. That's why next month we're going to be ramping up uh, Facebook ad spend. Cause I know, you know, if, if we're doing such a good go job closing cold email leads, which historically most people will tell you cold email leads, generally have a harder time closing, right? They're a little colder. Um, at least in my opinion, that's what I've heard from others. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe someone's closing them, you know, at, at a much higher rate than I am, but if I'm doing a good job of closing cold email leads, then closing you know, a, a paid lead should be a lot more simple. Right. Um, so we'll definitely be amping, amping that up just because, um, yeah, it just would make more sense. Um, now with your clients, are you mainly using lead ads? Uh, like uh, lead forms. Yeah, we do primarily. I mean, you know, it's sometimes like, let's say a live transfer rates look a little bit low, you know, on the three to 4% end. Um, I'll definitely maybe switch it up, um, to, uh, to, uh, to doing like a, a survey with like six or seven questions. I don't really, I would say for me, that's the one thing I, I should start doing is maybe a little bit more of a long form, uh, but I'll do lead forms and I'll ask, you know, maybe six, seven or eight questions inside the lead form. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Um, do you offer ROI guarantees? Um, I offer a live transfer guarantee, you know, we'll, we'll guarantee like, you know, 20 live transfers or, you know, sometimes even 30 live transfers if I'm confident on the market. Like if you're in the South, like generally I usually see live transfer rates are usually higher in the, on the East coast and in the South. So if you're in the East coast or in the South, I'm pretty confident to, I'm pretty, I feel pretty good about offering you a live transfer guarantee. But for instance, I have a client out in Sacramento. Um, and literally I think we're only like 10 days in, we've already done six live transfers for her. So I think we already have like a 12% live transfer rate or so, which is great in their market. I didn't offer them a live transfer guarantee because right. in California, I know the contact rate is generally lower because I've had a client out there before and it didn't just didn't work. Um, yep. so it really depends on the market they're in where the guarantee I'll, I'll, I'll offer them. Okay. What do you consider good low CPL or deals in escrow? Well, I would say deals in escrow would definitely be, would definitely be more important That's at the end of the day. Trick question from yeah. Ali. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, deals in escrow is always the most important thing. I mean, I mean, I think everyone loves bragging about, about low CPL numbers, but at the end of the day, um, you know, 50 cent leads don't mean anything if, if they're, if they're not turning into anything, you know, makes sense. Yeah. I always say the CPLs are the marketing numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right? exactly. Real numbers are, are the deals in escrow. Yeah, exactly. Are you doing any long form ads at Yash ask? Yeah. So like the most, I'll be honest, I, that's probably the one thing that I probably should be doing more of is like, you know, ads that have, you know, best guest credit or, you know, yada, 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 and bring them through a survey with like, you know, 10, 13 questions, you know, right now we'll do like a lead form with like maybe six to eight questions on it or six to seven questions on it along with name, email, phone number. So name, email, phone, and then maybe like another six to seven. Um, and we usually just keep it at that. Um, if that's considered long form, I know some dudes who are asking like 13 questions, um, which is awesome. I probably, maybe I should do that, but, um, you know, I found good success in what I'm doing right now. We're still, we're getting a good life transfer rate. We're getting good quality. So, you know, don't fix what's not broken, you know? Yep. Makes sense. Johnny says, what's your cold email strategy? Go like, watch, <laughs> go watch what's <Whiskey laughs> there. Watch the replay. Come on yeah. time, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, let's see, we are at a uh, quarter. To I must sit down, boys. Yeah. We are, we are crushing it on time. Um, have you been standing this whole time? Yeah, I got a standing <laughs> desk. I just press a button and it just like, you know, goes up there and down. There you go. So. Yeah. yeah. Man, I got so one of those. That's what yeah. I got. It's uh, awesome, dude. Yeah. 
But anyways, let's see. Let's see. Oh man, we get so many questions. Just they just keep piling in here. So, um, uh, Alan here is asking, you know, where, do you, where, where do you buy your warmed up Gmail accounts from? You're you're not buying warmed Wait. Gmail accounts, right? You're creating them. Uh, no, we'll buy them. Yeah, we'll buy them. Um, I forget where I saw this, but I saw some dude. Oh, you are them. buying them. Yeah. Um. Let me look up the website really quick because um, we haven't had the buy. Sorry, in a I while. skipped a bunch of questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Matt, you can take over because I just skipped yeah, I just the seven questions. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I'll post it in the. Uh, I'll post it in the chat, man. I mean, that's where okay. I generally get them from. Um, I just post it in the chat, um, but that's where I get them from, and that guy usually delivers pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good emails. Cool. Um, we used to create them, like we used to create, like you know. Chris R. Lombardi, 2114, right? Chris R. Lombardi, yada, yada, yada. Um, and those got great reply rates, but um, starting from scratch with a new email, I felt like it just got lower reply rates. It was a longer warm up rate. So the problem was we had to, we bought these warmed up, we bought warmed up accounts and we're, they weren't even really warmed up per se. They just, you know, buy year old accounts or 10 year old accounts. Um, um, and you still have to warm them up because no emails have been sent. But what's key is when you're calling, you have to mention the account it came from, right? So for instance, one of our accounts is, um, I know her name is like Caitlin Jagger 1115. Um, so, hey, you know, you respond to an email from my coworker, Caitlin Jagger, you know? So I always reference the coworker, the coworker's name that's, that their name is in the cold email. Because in every time, in that positive reply form that the VAs fill out, there's a section called source. So they'll put in maybe like Facebook or Instagram or, or in the source, they'll, they'll mention the first and last name of the email account it came from. Um, so this way I know to reference on that call, like, you know, Hey, you know, me and you were chatting on Instagram. I thought it'd be better if I just gave you a quick call or me and you were chatting on Facebook or LinkedIn, or, Hey, you respond to my team member, Caitlin Jagger. So it's important to have that source. So when you're calling, you can reference that um, as the reason why you're calling. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah, this is uh, this is crazy. So you can get stuff where it's 2008 Gmail accounts, 2017, 2014. Wow, yeah. awesome. Yeah, and it's really um, not that expensive at all. Yeah, no, it's not. You'd be surprised. Um, so we've you know we've bought ten year old accounts, we bought one year old accounts. Yeah. Um, what I do you found see the same? Gold? You know, recently. So recently we bought. Actually, I would say ninety percent of our accounts right now are uh our one-year-old accounts we had 10-year-old accounts um and those did good but they all got shut down because i made a mistake um i had our va uh send uh test emails to this like one address called gmas.co slash inbox where you can test if your emails are landing in spam we did that all of our accounts got shut down um so then we bought new accounts and we just i bought the year-old accounts because i heard from someone that it doesn't make a difference it didn't. okay gotcha uh, let's see. Do you add business address in full name in your cold emailing for compliance? No, but maybe, <laughs> maybe I should. I actually had one dude uh, message me back saying, um, you know, this is not compliant or, you know, whatever crap. He actually, he actually responded to the cold email positively just so I could call him. I get him on the phone for him to, for him to complain to me. I'm yeah. uh, saying he was reporting me to can't spam. I'm like, all right, dude. <laughs> yep. But that, you know, I, we sent, you know, I don't know, a hundred thousand emails or so now. I, you know, I haven't gotten fined yet, I, I guess. <laughs> no comment. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. But no, we haven't. Um, I feel like I thought that would hurt the reply rate. And I've seen a couple like cold emailers that, that don't do that. So, or haven't done that. So like, I guess I'll just, you know, if they're not doing it, then I'm not gonna. Right. Makes yeah. sense. Um, do the email the lead individually? Yep. Let's see here. Where do you buy it? Yeah. Getting shut down again. Create 20 email accounts. Okay. Where do, you, where do you get your VAs? You already mentioned that. Um, some people are hungry enough to do anything, especially since their BPO industry got hit hard with the Rona. Yep. Um, are the VAs logging? In, oh, here's a good one. Are the VAs logging into each of their 60 Gmail accounts from the same IP address? It's a great question. Actually, that was a lot. That was that was a huge issue in the beginning. So um, they all have. Uh, we have NordVPN. All the VPNs have. Uh, I mean, all the VAs uh, have NordVPN sold in their computer. They all log into the same server every single day. That's a great question because that was, I feel like that was an issue in the beginning when I first started cold emailing. And I think that was a reason why we were getting accounts shut down in the beginning because I, I've heard this from someone one time where Google, um, you know, they generally, uh, they slapped the, the band hammer on accounts that 
emails come from like India or um, the Philippines or like Thailand, like generally accounts where mass emails will generally come from, from, from those countries, they slap the band hammer a little quicker. Um, so when I read that, I was like, man, well, we got to get our VAs on, on, uh, on US IPs, maybe that'll help our accounts. Um, so they all log into the same server every single day on NordVPN. Um, so they have the same IP every single day, just in case. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Where do you get these agent emails from? Did you already mention where you're scraping? Yeah. D7 lead finder. D7. Oh, yep. Okay. Uh, got my VA from Ravi scaling with systems. Been with me for a year now. Love it. Don't believe yep. rumors. Let's see here. Uh, I'm in for a cold email VA SOP masterclass. There we go. Um, yep. <laughs> so I think I gave all the, all the, all the beans away here anyway. Right. This is a free, so, this is a free cold email uh, masterclass. <laughs> what helped your clients convert more deals or convert more? I'm not sure if he's referring to, you know it. what? I, I personally, I think it's just the expectations you set up front, you know, that they're not going to convert every single lead. So every single time that we bring on a client, um, we schedule a, uh, you know, kickoff call, onboarding call, success call, whatever you want to call it. Um, which is just an hour call where I basically resell them on the system, you know, where it's just a, another slide deck where we take them through, we go over the program and, and, um, you know, we, you know, obviously the demo is more high, is more high level or, uh, you know, it's more vague. Um, we don't go too deep in the trenches and then on the success call, we go a little bit more deep in the trenches. So they know a little bit more of what's going on. Um, and then on that call, we go over strict expectations. Um, I found that's what it comes down to, um, is really just the expectations you set. I mean, have you guys sort of seen the same thing as well? I mean, I think I've learned that from you guys too. Sometimes it's just the expectations that you set with some of these clients, um, which is really where the, where the uh, how successful they're going to be sometimes. Makes sense. Um, do you know what your client's conversion rate is currently? based on like the live transfers and what they're, what they're doing? Yeah. So if we do 10 live transfers, generally, um, generally we'll see roughly about three of those turn into an agency agreement, like turn into a new wow. client. Okay. Yeah. Generally we see about three. <laughs> we have one dude who did, uh, who did 11 agency agreements in his first three days. I mentioned that earlier, which was like ridiculous for a solo agent. So generally our clients will see three. And we have some who do more in the, you know, the one or two range. But those, the, the clients who, who do a great job turning that live transfer into an appointment are the ones who, you know, will convert roughly three to five of those into an agency agreement. Generally what we'll see. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Peterson's text now is a great free platform for phone numbers. Um, does 1,000 emails per day keep your calendar full or do you think you could send more? Um, to send more, we'd have to hire more VAs, right? Because <laughs> my VAs, I think their hands are hurting at this point. Um, so I would say, yeah, I, I, you know, I think now we're at a point where um, I have to start transitioning more to paid ads because I, I think I think at some point you can't build your entire agency on cold email, right? Because at some point you're not going to have the time just to keep doing those positive replies. So you do you do sort of bottom out as far as how many, um, you know, how consistent you can be with the cold emails. So um, what, what was the, uh, what was that? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I think it went on a little bit of a tangent there. What was it? Uh, basically, do you think, um, you could send way more or does this basically fill up your calendar as one person does two VAs sending 500 days? I, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, I think we're at a good place right now, especially because I am starting to add in more of the paid ads where I think if we start sending more, I wouldn't be able to handle it. Uh, especially right now we're, you know, just on Monday and Tuesday, we had 13 positive replies each single day. So that's just an extra 26 leads that I had to, that were added into the funnel that we had to call, um, which, you know, if they don't pick up now, I have to call them, you know, once a day for the next few days. So, um, you know, there's only so much, I think we're at a good place right now um, with sending a thousand a day, honestly. Makes which sense. gives us me enough room to manage clients, still handle the fulfillment. Right now we're teaching our VAs the, the fulfillment and, and doing the ads how I do it. So uh, I think right now we're at a good place where I still have enough free time to sort of add in some new things. That'll work. Yeah, because right now we don't just do the email. You know, we do a lot of Instagram as well. Like we'll message so you're doing friends outreach? on Instagram. You're doing cold yeah. outreach on Instagram and everything. Yeah, like same exact thing. We just take cold email and we bring it to Instagram. <laughs> and we bring it to Instagram. Um, at one point we were literally like 
we did we did this for a little bit, but um, the results were really good in the beginning. And then for some reason, they fizzled out. We bought from this website that I just gave you guys. We bought aged Instagram accounts, and we were creating accounts that you know with just these different names. We filled up the photos, and we were just going to different hashtags and just blasting you know blasting messages away. And that worked for a little bit, but it, for some reason, it fizzled out. Um, so now I just sort of focus on like you know maybe, you know, Instagram friends, you can message, you know, friend people and, and Instagram DM them. So we do the same thing on Instagram. Now, are you, Doug Eisen is asking, uh, so you run all the ads out of your account or theirs? We run the ads in our business manager. Uh, we ask them to, you know, we have them add us to their page. Um, then I bring, you know, I bring the page into our business manager, run it from their page, from, from their page. Sometimes, you know, I'll run it from an unbranded page. Sort of just like depends. I have some clients I do do that for. Um, but for the most part, I do just run it from their page. Makes sense. But all the ads yeah. from your own ad account. From, from, yeah, from our business manager, our ad account. Yep. I charge for the ad spend. So we just don't have to deal with that headache. Right. Yep. How do you get good leads? Is what <laughs> Yash is asking. For clients or who asks good that? realtors? <laughs> I'd be asking. Oh, uh, good leads. Do you use live transfers? Yes, you lose live transfers, but as far as how you get good leads, um, you know, you did mention that sometimes you'll, your live transfers are low, and so you change a couple things. So I guess maybe what are you doing to, to try and keep your live transfers number high? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so right now, most of my clients, they, they're more in that like eight to <laughs> like 10% range. Um, but we do have like a couple, I think like one or two where it's just like in the 3% range. So, you know, either we'll just move over to like a survey funnel where we'll ask, you know, we'll, we'll take them off lead forms and we'll move more towards um, like a seven, eight or, you know, maybe, maybe a 10 question survey will generate leads through that way. Um, or uh, maybe we'll add more questions to the lead form. So that's another way that we'll do it. Or we'll just you know, for instance, like we have one client in Asheville, net North Carolina, for some reason we are just struggling. Like that's the one client, the once the one location we we're just struggling with live transfers in. Right. Um, so instead what we did was we changed up the ad. So instead of running it in Asheville, we're running it in uh, Rutherford County, which is the County like right Southwest where he is. And that actually improved the live transfer rate a little bit. I don't know what it was in Asheville, but we were just struggling over there. Uh, we took basically the same ad, switched up, you know, switched up the image, switched up the median sale price in the homes list ad, moved it down a little bit, and um, things started picking up a little more just the other day. Um, so sometimes just changing up the images, changing up the uh, the questions on the lead forms, and then maybe trying to survey. Um, you know, some some clients are just you know those problem areas, so that, you know it takes a couple ads just to, to make it hit. Like for instance, Detroit. We have a client in Detroit. Oh my God, it, it has been tough. We ran one ad. We had one ad running her first month in Macomb County. Nobody oh, no, has in, phones in, here in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, in Oakland. It was in Oakland, Oakland County, man. We were running ads over there, struggling. We think we had like, maybe we had six live, maybe eight live, maybe I want to see six live transfers in that first month. We were like most of the way, we were like halfway through this month. I said, look, we're going to switch up the counties here. So then we targeted Wayne County and Macomb County, which had just a slightly lower median sale. And just over these last, um, three days, I think. So in her first month, she had like six live transfers just in these last three days. I think she's up to like, she's had already 11 just by switching that little location and switching up the ad a little bit and things really blew up that fast. Yep. Yeah. Just like little switches like that. Sometimes it's the location, you know, Shane, we're on uh, Peter's question. What are live transfers anyways? I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to answer that Shane or? I can me, oh, what are live okay. transfers anyway? Yeah, so I mean, essentially live transfer is uh, an ISA team that's calling up the leads, right? And uh, they get somebody on the hook and propose a live transfer where they're actually connecting that lead directly to uh, the real estate agent um, in real time. Uh, I don't know if you've ever listened to your calls, but with, um, with uh, um, lead spring, uh, they're typically building up a little bit of a relationship at the beginning uh, with that lead and uh, actually the calls are really, really good. And then at the end of it, it's like, Hey, you know what? I've got Chris here in the office. If you'd like, I can get him to answer, you know, some questions that you might have and we can do that right away. And then they go ahead and get Chris on the phone and then they actually do, they merge the calls together and uh, they hop off the call and that's it. And then the real estate agent takes over that call 
Uh, hopefully, they're trying to um, convert that lead into uh, an in-office appointment. That's typically what I suggest most of my clients to do, try to get them into the office. And um, yeah, that's typically what the, what the live transfer call is. Yep. And you'd be surprised at how many agents don't know what a live transfer is. I have to clarify that on the demo um, a lot of the times. So there have been times where I've gone to the end of a demo and they didn't know what a live transfer was. I'm like, Well, you know, one of the things <laughs> that... I, to, yeah, that's, I'm, that's obviously my fault. <laughs> yeah. One, one of the things I want to work on a little bit more um, and is, is, uh, you know, live transfer scripts. Like what do you, what do you do with these live transfers? Right. Cause I've, what I'm, one of the things I'm finding out now, because just live transfers are getting really, really popular. Um, you know, and agents want them. They just don't know what to do with the leads. Once they get on the phone with them, it's like, well, I got a live transfer. I got to pick up the call now. What? Right. And then they, they lose that lead and they're not converting them into anything. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and now it just goes back into, you know, their database or whatever. And then they got to follow up for, you know, 12 months or whatever that is. So I think one of the things we're going to work on probably over the next few months is scripts on converting these leads into oh, actual in-office appointments. Right. So, I, I need that. <laughs> let me know. Let me know when that's developed. Most of them, most of them need that because they're super excited to get live transfers, but they have no clue yeah. what to do with them. I'll tell you what, the, the clients that are most successful at use us, they, they convert that live transfer in, into an in-office appointment sooner than later. The clients that are not, and this is literally in our onboarding call. So I set that expectation up front. I just started recently doing this. The ones that are not successful, what they'll do is, they, is on that live transfer, instead of trying to push them to the office, what they'll do is they'll just set them up with custom listing notifications and uh, they'll wait until they start interacting in the portal. I'm like, you know, they just take the passive approach. I'm like, oh, geez. And, and then, you know, so we've had that happen too, um, which is sort of my fault, I guess, around setting those expectations more up front. Uh, but now we do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really, really, really quickly here, let's uh, uh, lightning round here, these, these questions that yeah. are coming in. But um, P, uh, who was it? Jose, how much do you charge for ad spend on average? Well, it's included in the price. So, you know, we'll spend anywhere from 500 to 700, right? It just depends. If we're not getting them good results, we'll start up in the ad spend. If we're getting them great results, then, you know, heck, we can, we can decrease it, right? It just depends on the ad, the, the cost per lead that we're getting in that market. And it depends if we're getting them good results. Because if they're not, I'm going to make sure we finish that month pretty strong and I'll, I'll up the ad spend on them. Uh, really quickly, Giovanni here, and I think we actually answered this question, which was about um, compliance with your cold emails. So are you including information inside of your cold emails? Uh, your answer was, no, I'm not. Maybe I should take a look at that. <laughs> I, I might, I probably should. I mean, we uh, at the end of the day, we do have an opt-out email. And I heard that was one of the most important things to have. So like reply back, no, if you want to be taken off the list. Or PS, if you don't want to receive my emails anymore, re respond back and let me know. So we do have that. And I, from what I heard, it's like one of the most important things to have. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A good question here from Alec, which is actually, you know, I, I'm sure this kind of pops into everybody's mind every once in a while. Uh, but Alec is asking, how is your product different, better, unique compared to everyone else's product that's gone through the Academy? Yeah, man. You know what? That is an amazing question. And I wonder that too, because I'm trying, I'm always trying to make it a little bit different than what other people do. Um, I don't know. What are other people doing? You know, I, I mean, I've changed up my product. I feel like a little bit more. Well, what okay. Are doing. So let, let, I, this is kind of interesting because a lot of people, you know, are always a little concerned about saturation. I was concerned about saturation four years ago, right? When I got into this, Wow. Um, we talk about it a lot. People have always come up with it. Since we have an accountant um, on Whiskey Thursday tonight, let's do the math, right? Yeah. We have 500 paid members inside of the Academy or roughly close to that, right? 500 yeah. let's say let's just for you know let, let's say that everybody or 50 percent of academy members actually are implementing what and that's not typical right like most people buy courses they don't really they go through yeah. it maybe, yeah. they, maybe a small percentage of them actually implement um but let's just, you know really go through like let's say just half so 250 people 250 marketers and then let's take out like 50 of those that are real estate agents because they joined because the academy, like we okay, a lot of real fair. estate agents yeah. join the academy to learn how to do their, their own ads, right? So we got 200, 200 members inside of the academy, all right? Matt, how many licensed real estate agents right now, active licensed real estate agents inside of the United States? One point two? two, maybe. Two? 1.2 1. 2 million, maybe. <laughs> so, like, so, so Chris, since you're the accountant, We've got 200 yeah. Academy members with 
two, you know, two million real estate agents. That's six thousand. We could all. That's six thousand. One point two million divided by two hundred uh, would be six thousand. Six thousand. And and how many have you spoken to in the past, say six months? That's a good point. Yeah. Um, in the past six months, um, well, based on based on the report I have here. As far as the ones that we've actually had on the phone. Yeah, like, like the demos you've done, right? Like how many demos have you done in the past six months? Like the, my point is the reality, yeah. the reality is that that doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And see, even using six months, like most people don't remember what, they, what presentation they saw three days ago, right? The, yeah. I, I think part of it is just like, we've got to get away from this mindset, which is like the scarcity mindset, right? Like the, the abundance is there. It doesn't matter what you're like, as long as you have a system that uniquely separates you from maybe the last three or four people they've spoken to, and you can create that connection with them and you can build that trust with them and you can show results and you can provide some testimonials and, you know, these other things that pushes them over the edge. You know, a lot of times it's just timing. Sometimes it's just budget, right? There's a lot of yeah. different things. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and you know, it's someone who wasn't qualified six months ago might be qualified now. Exactly. Um, yeah. So don't to so worry I, about like, yeah. Hey, everybody, what about all the people inside of the Academy? You know, is that we're all learning the same thing, blah, blah, blah. Like, like the reality and I'm using like big numbers, like 50%. No, it's more like 10% of the people that have joined me. It's like, you're talking 50 people, right? Yeah. Just, I, I mean, but he does bring up a good point. I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think I do think I, I do try and do things differently. Like we do unqualify certain leads. We only send certain leads over to the ISA team. So that means that our, our live transfers do have, you know, certain parameters on them. So I think maybe that makes me a little bit more unique. I, I personally would feel like I try and make, I try and make my product as hands on as possible. I know Alex, you know, Alex does a great job as far as white labeling. He has a great product as well, right? I think he does a very sort of similar thing. Uh, but I know, I think right, right Alex, you, you do really long form leads, I think. Right. So, um, you know, I, I, I feel like I do something a little bit different. I feel like, I feel like it was pretty important, but I don't know how many are, are, are that. You know really different. But at the end of the day, there's so many agents. You, <laughs> you know what makes the difference? The result. Like that's yeah. what's going to make the difference. Like working with really good clients that I can actually generate a result for themselves. That's what's going to make the difference moving forward. Yeah. Because now you absolutely. can leverage those to get more clients, right? Because yep. nobody really yep. like the systems are good and all this other stuff, like all that stuff is great. But, and, and, but if you have a good system, you're going to get good results, right? If you have a yeah. bad system, you're going to get bad results. But at the end mm -hmm. of the day, really, the only thing that really matters is that end result. So if you can find clients that you can work with and you can generate leads and have a system in place where they can actually generate a decent result, then you can leverage those results. You know, and, and when I say results, like actual closings, right? Yes. Like that's not CPLs, not generating leads, not like live trend, like those, those end results is really what's going to change the game for you. That's what's going to separate you from everybody. Absolutely. Yep. That's Alex point, says, man. who takes care of your Facebook ads, high level setup, automation, all that fun stuff. <laughs> it's like, not you, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 Alex he's trying, I think he's trying to get me, man. I don't know. I, I, um, who, uh, where was that original question? Right. I can make sure. Oh, the, oh, that was Alex. Oh, that, that wasn't, Alexander, that was Alex Carvalho, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought that was, I thought it was Alex. Alexander. <laughs> All right. So, who takes care of your Facebook ads? I do my own Facebook ads. Um, I have two VAs right now that I am training on how to do it because at this point, SOP that we do a very similar process across the board that has been working for us to get a good live transfer rate. Um, and as far as who takes care of your high level, Facebook ads, high level setup, like we've, you know, I feel like I have a really good high level snapshot. I built off, you know, I, you, I built off the bread snapshot that you guys did like a year ago. I took that and I've just built it, you know, out from there. Um, so everything's basically in house. I've been trying to keep it in house at least. Uh, let's see. Have you tried using go high levels live transfer feature? No, I haven't. Um, we use lead spring as our ISA. Okay. Um, so obviously the dials that they make are, are, are separate. So that's, all right, so that's the one thing we don't have in-house is, okay. is, is, the, uh, is the ISA scrolling. Uh, Steve here, are you using higher intent lead ads? Uh, think about testing this due to clients saying numbers are bad. What, just like long, more long form leads? No, you got, like you got an option on the lead form to use higher intent. Oh, where not, they, yeah, have they have to, to yeah, they have confirm to like, it. They have to like swipe on the, uh, instead of hit submit, they have to like swipe. 
I don't know. I just use whatever defaults are there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Don't really bother with any of that stuff. And, and, you know, I mean, Steve, we talk a lot about this too, right? Uh, You know, with clients complaining about, you know, bad leads or bad data or anything like that, like you really need to start digging in through those numbers to figure out, you know, if that's real or if it's just perception. At the end of the day, you know, roughly, you know, thankfully, um, you know, we have the reports, so we see the numbers at the I from our calling ISCs, and we see the bad data. It's roughly like twenty percent. So if I have a call, if I have I have non ISA clients that call leads themselves, they're telling me all the leads have bad numbers. I know that's BS because we have people that are calling the leads that you know we we already we roughly see a twenty percent number. Um, so I know that's just a bunch of BS. And I set that expectation up front on the on the onboarding call anyway that we know the data because we have people that are calling anyway. Um, so I generally don't really get that, you know, all the numbers are bad anymore. I used to a couple months ago, I haven't really gotten that in a while anymore. All my, all my clients that call leads themselves, um, they're all happy. Awesome. Well, listen, yeah. uh, Chris, there's, there's, there's two questions in here that I think would um, probably take another half an hour to answer. We don't have that much time anymore. One of them is about your Instagram strategies. The other one is about profit levels. So I don't think we actually need to dig into this. Let's do one more question here about... Um, <laughs> How do you set expectations for leads with your clients? Uh, I, I, I'm assuming that's what the question is. Um, yeah, how do you expect, how do you set expectations for leads? So I'm guessing, like you said, how people are going to uh, proceed with their leads and, and what they can expect from them. There's a yeah, freaking cricket so, in my basement and it's driving me nuts. There's a cricket the last time we were on Zoom. Dude, I know, and I got it last time, but this one, like, I, maybe there's two. Because it's like it's over here, and then it's like over, and it's just like driving me nuts. Oh, there's definitely two. You know, when 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 they're cricketing, you know what they're doing, right? They're mating. Make baby crickets. I don't know. They're making baby crickets. You're gonna next week. <laughs> really, with that whiskey or? theory, saying you're gonna have about thirty in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. man. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry. I just I'm like, what in the world? Oh, also, if you're watching and you've made it this far. Hashtag super trooper down in the comments below. Let us know that you have made it this far. All right. Sorry, Chris. Let's get what, 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 what was the, uh, what was the question, man? How do you set expectations for the leads? Yeah, so, oh, uh, like how do we set expectations for the clients? So like, mm-hmm. um, my, my bad, Peter, uh, by the way, I try, I, or Peter, I try to add in, um, I'm going to add you after it's so not let me click on your name to go to your profile. Um, real quick before I forget that, but, um, how do I set expectations? Um, so we just have a really strict onboarding call um is basically what we have um you know i we in the beginning of the onboarding call we go on you know we go into detail about the system and then we go into more detail about like expectations so <laughs> the onboarding call is more about reselling them on the system and then of course it goes into more about um and then we go into uh, a lot of experts so <laughs> the onboarding call get, actually gets pretty negative at some point but i want to set that expectation up front mm-hmm. of, of what things are going to look like because uh, like for instance we once had one client go 15 days without a live transfer so now yeah, we want that once happened, but now the end of the month with six live transfers. Month two, they had twelve. Now we're in month three. We're nineteen days in, and they've gotten nineteen live transfers. So literally a live transfer a day. So I I show that I show that you know that exact account in the onboarding calls just to show people, hey, in the worst case scenario, if you don't get a live transfer in the first week or two, look what happened to this guy. It happened to him, but look at the great results he's getting right now. Right. So I, so on the onboarding call, I pull up the client results. So just to sort of set that expectation up front, like this is the worst case example that could happen. If it happens to you, it's all okay. And things will be all right. And look how it turned out for him. We had that happen today with some, with some lady, I, I set the expectation with her. She can go two weeks without her first live transfer. She's already gone, gone one week with that one. We got on the, we got, we had our weekly check and call because I touch base with all my clients once a week, had our weekly check and call. She wasn't mad at me. She was totally cool with me because I set that expectation up front and she knows that she'll be good. Um, so hopefully that sort of answers that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it does. Absolutely. So, and uh, if you haven't hashtag super trooper, this is the time you need to do it because uh, we're going to end this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two hours and 15 minutes. Chris. This is awesome, man. Appreciate you guys having me on. Dude, for, for, for somebody that did not think they could add value to Whiskey Thursday. I know. Right? Like, seriously. I know. When you guys asked me, I was like, I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> but I guess, you know, I, I, I didn't realize how much, you know, how much we could dive into it. And I appreciate being on, man. It's so crazy just to think 
that, you know, a year and a half ago, I was walking, you know, to share the stage with all these other great marketers that, you know, I look up to that are doing such a great job in the real estate community and share the stage with them and to have watched them do this and now be on here is a, is a great honor, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. Absolutely. It's been a blast. And, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're happy and we're, we're, we've, we're honored to, you know, of course, be a part of your, your success and your journey. It's been, it's been great to have you as part of the Academy. Um, you know, really, really quickly, cause I want to throw a plug in here about the Academy. Uh, you know, you've been around for a long time. I want to ask you what's one of the, what, what has been one of the most valuable things for you inside of you yeah go get your cricket oh man <laughs> you, yeah. you go catch your cricket Matt yeah, what, dude. What, 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 what's been one of the most valuable things you have been able to get out from the academy um, and that's really helped you grow your business over the past year and a half oh man I mean everything that I do real estate marketing wise is from the academy right so um yeah it's a good question first of all being in the group at the end of the day being in the student group is one of the most important things, right? Because if you have you know certain questions that might pop up, you can always pop into the group. You can always, you know, count on you know Shane or Matt getting back to you. You can always count on any of the students jumping in there. So being in the group is always one of the best thing. Um, you guys providing that lead conversion academy also huge, right? Being able to have that for you know we have a couple of new agents that are using us calling leads themselves. So when they have questions, I point them to that lead conversion academy, right? That you guys so generally so generously provided us. What's Matt doing here? Oh, he's got the uh, he hottest cricket. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Anyways. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, man. I mean, everything that I've learned uh, as far as real estate wise, you know, has come from you guys. So um, it really, come, but as far as just the course itself, being in the group and getting that personal support is really everything. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, again, you know, um, number one, we really appreciate you kind of, you know, obviously being part of all of this, uh, being part of the Academy. I definitely appreciate you spending a couple hours with us tonight on Whiskey Thursday. Everybody else has been watching the entire time. We've got a bunch of people still watching here. Um, and we really appreciate you tuning into Whiskey Thursday here. If you're watching uh, from YouTube, make sure to come check us out every Thursday night for Whiskey Thursday, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time inside the Real Estate Marketing Conversion Mastery Facebook group. You don't want to miss this show. This is a lot of fun. Uh, we get uh, great um, agency owners, real estate agents, and, and uh, you know people doing great things like Chris Lombardi, uh, who's joined us tonight for, uh, and we've been here for uh, like, wow, I think we signed on at uh, uh, eight o'clock. It's been two hours and 20 minutes. I don't know where the time goes by with Whiskey Thursday. Every time yeah. I get on, I'm like, okay, we're going to make this one short. Right. And yep. just keep on and going. Someday, and, uh, someday we'll do like a half combo hour. Combo is yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. And guys, if you're watching, uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. But I hope you've gotten a ton of value here tonight. Chris has shared so much information. Um, and I think this, Chris, I think this will become the official Whiskey Thursday cold email strategy. Uh, yeah, you've literally. shared a lot of information. It's been really, it's been amazing. I, I've learned some things. I'm sure people that have been watching this uh, have learned as well. And, awesome, uh, man. Yeah, I Chris, that. thanks so much for, uh, for, for coming and uh, hanging out with us tonight. Matt, anything else you want to add to that? Your cricket, stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch Whiskey Thursday. Probably what it was. Just want to come see what's going on. <laughs> Not going to happen. Anyways. <laughs> no, with that, uh, I had a good time. Hope you guys all had a good time. And we'll see you next week. Next week, Absolutely. we've got Todd Taylor. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Yeah, that's an interesting story. I can't wait to get Todd on the call. Another. Uh, yeah, another uh, another Academy member. Uh, Todd's interesting because he's working full time building up this massive agency. So we're going to learn about how he does it and uh, juggling his uh, his crazy crazy schedule. So I uh, can't wait for for that that uh, that show next week. It's gonna be fun. Love it. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Nice. If you enjoyed this with Chris, make sure to uh, thank him down below in the comments. And we will see you all next week. Take care. Thanks for hopping on, everyone. I appreciate everyone hopping on here and and supporting me. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Have a good one. Stick around, Chris. <laughs> Absolutely.